I mean, it slaps most of the time, but it hits hard on a Friday morning when you have won 12 in a row. Congratulations to the Edmonton Oilers on making it an even dozen in once again impressive fashion against the Kraken as they get it done. Fall behind. First period was not something to be desired, as they say. Three breakaways, clear-cut breakaways. Two of them end up in the back of the net. Tan have made a nice move on his and kind of just blew it at the last second. They don't ask how you start him. They only ask how you finish him. Bingo. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't matter how you get there yeah, it does, yeah. as long as you do. I uh, I saw a video today. I said, what does this say about life? It was on Twitter. And two balls were released at the same time. Yeah. And one went on this even path. Yeah. And the other one went through ups and downs. And you know which ball got to the end first, Eric? The one that went on the ups and downs. Because life has ups and downs, and seasons have ups and downs, but you can still get there ahead of the pace. I might ask you about this uh, story about this uh, turtle and a rabbit. Okay. And there's a race between the two of them. Yes, you see. yes, yes. Uh, you, you bet on sports, right? I mean, uh, cool hit the bet cool bet hotline yeah. of the day yesterday. That was yeah, nice. Yeah, the, the, the money would be on the rabbit to win the race, right? It's faster, but, but the turtle continues to go, right? Mm, and, yeah, yeah. and maybe the start isn't the best. But come the end of the race, guess who won? The turtle. Ah, oh, that's amazing. And it was a steady pace. Gator Hockey's in and says, winning doesn't suck. You're right. Winning doesn't suck, right? Box Pounder's in and says, I'm so proud. Our little winning streak has reached puberty. Soon it will rock a YTT stash. <laughs> YouTube Trev's mustache is bordering on when I first met this kid at Boston Pizza about a year ago. He came up, I was like, whoa, who's this weird kid with this huge mustache? But it's getting, uh, it's looking pretty good again. Seeing photos of him without one now, just kind of, it's a, it's a little more creepy. It, he's, it's his, creepier than the mustache. His face is meant to have a stash. Yeah. Just like Stuart's, imagine rolling out Stuart Skinner right now with no mustache. First of all, don't do anything to Stuart Skinner right now. Let Stuart Skinner continue to do what he's done over his last 18. This dude is 16 and 2. Maybe a plunger on the head. Oh. Or a beret. So, yeah, that's Either something. Or, like, I mean, yeah, you can do that too. Like but just don't do much beyond that. Yeah. Okay? You can text us anytime. 780 218 9999. 780 218 9999. That'll get you into the Paris Jewelers inbox if you're trying to make some plans for Valentine's Day. May we suggest that our friends at PJs. Can help you out. Visit them at parisjewelers.com. 22 locations across this country. Uh, Canadian, 
and family owned. Go visit them at Paris Jewelers today, this weekend, anytime prior to Valentine's Day. And uh, find your, your someone special, something special. And also, you don't need to be in a relationship. If you're just riding solo this year, treat yourself. Yeah. Fall in love with yourself all over again. Wrap it, put your own name on it, and then just leave it out on the night of February 13th. Wake up in the morning like, oh, somebody loves me. And then when you open it, it's from you. you go, oh, I love myself. Which is a message to kids today. Loving yourself is important. I'm sure the staff would write up too. like a, a from PJ. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> from your friends yeah. at PJ's. We love you. We love you too. <laughs> <laughs> so you can text us in the Paris Jewelers inbox. Atif's already rolled in there hey. hot and heavy today. I mean, Atif's text to get us rolling this morning. It's probably too long to do in full-blown Atif voice. Years. But I'll Selling just, I'll just short I'll here. Uh, it was the morning after. <laughs> Tamin the Kraken. You wake up with a headache and your head's spinning. Only to realize that it's your hangover from the night before. Oh, boy. All you remember is you were chatting, chanting, I think you meant, 12 in a row. 12 in a row. You also drank 12 6 o'clock or lockers in a row. The next opponent plays out of the BPS oh. building in the Saddle Dome. Sure, they have three hockey teams that play out of that crap hole. They don't even sell the 6 o'clock or lager. Their loss... They don't have a team that's sizzling called the Edmonton Oilers. 13 in a row tomorrow night. Bring on the flames. Can I get a conch? <clears throat> a teeth. A teeth. The L O G G E R. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Logging, uh, yeah. The, uh, the man in the chair is with us. He's in the nasty chat this morning. It was funny because I came in this morning. I think I saw the last text of last night was from a teeth. Beauty. And like I don't I don't know like tip just after tip, eleven hey? yeah just after eleven and then I refreshed it to get today's new text before the show <laughs> and uh, the first one that came in was a teeth in the five o'clock hour today so a teeth buddy you know we love you we'll see you at the Super Bowl party you can join us for our Super Bowl party Century Casino Fort Road uh it's gonna be a lot of fun very much looking forward to it we'll have some uh, prizing to give away and stuff and we'll enjoy an excellent Detroit Lions win over the Buffalo Bills. Oh, Mr. Uh, Ravens, Mr. Lean's uh, in. Mr. Lean is in. Mr. Hey. Lean dropping some booze on his well, early. I appreciate TSN. that. See, if you're a Ravens fan, you have to think this is the year, right? Like, the, all the pressure's on now. You and I have no business being there, really. No we're pressure we're for kinda, the Lions. Eh, house money. What didn't we say? All, all, all my team's supposed to do is eventually lose to the Niners. You won your playoff game. It's, That's it. This guy's yeah. team's not even supposed to make it past the Kansas City Chiefs. We weren't even supposed to make it in the playoffs. <laughs> Here we are. Look at us. Hey, and Only and one this, of our teams the has the yeah. expectations of being a Super Bowl champion. Mm -hmm. Mm -mm. The Buffalo Bills, the Ravens, people would expect more we from the Ravens than the, the Buffalo Bills We had a 5% right chance. At the start of this season, it was the Bills. That's the okay. That's I'll yeah. give you that. That's Long way away. I'll give you that, but we're not at the start of the season anymore. No. We're, okay. we're Divisional second rounds? week of the playoffs. <laughs> we're going to lose to the Texans. Good to see you, Mr. Lee. <laughs> you're no, you're not going to lose to the Texans. That weather's going to... I like uh, C.J. Stroud to keep it within 10, though. But we'll get into that a little bit. Huge NFL day on the lot. We got a great day here on Edmonton Sports Talk today. Our show's jam-packed. We'll lay it out for you. Mike Johnson's probably going to join us before 7 o'clock. He's, he's flying back from Calgary to Toronto uh, on, a, on a flight just after 7 o'clock. So he's going to text me when he gets through security at the Calgary airport. And hopefully we'll have him on maybe even later on in the 6 o'clock hour here. So want to catch up with MJ. Have him uh, give us his thoughts on that Flames-Leafs game last night. His thoughts on the Oilers winning 12 in a row. There's lots of things we can discuss coming on the victory. Thank you to everybody who tuned in to our post-game show last night with Tommy Gazzola and Matt Cassian. Uh, people were hopping in there last night on that chat as well. They were all fired up after the victory. If you're watching any of our content live or later on, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We would appreciate the sub as we work our way up towards 7,000 subs. So just click subscribe, and uh, you'll make sure you never miss any of our content, which we would very much appreciate. Dave Naylor is going to be by around 7.30. We'll talk some of the CFL movement. We'll obviously set up the weekend in the National Football League with Naylor, Cool Bed Hotline, of the day, day and hour number two. Uh, hour number three, even busier. We're going to have three questions too many. We're going to have kind of easy trivia. Pat Steinberg from Fan 960 down in uh, Calgary is going to join us around 820. Uh, give us some thoughts on how the Flames looked last night, what he's expecting from a Battle of Alberta on Saturday. And then Curly Gittins Jr., one of the newest members of the Edmonton Elks, he's going to pop on around uh, 830 this morning. And we'll get his thoughts on being reunited with QBMBT. Uh, he had a huge season with him couple years ago 
And uh, now kind of a fresh start for Curly here in yeah. Edmonton. Getting the old band back together. is with The whole name. band. The old band. Yeah. The whole band is back together. R.C. Anderson says, I've never seen a three-minute NHL power play before. It's like seeing first and nine. In fo- like you know, yeah. in football, it, <laughs> it comes about once every five years. You, you think it's like an automatic, like okay, wait, this says this is an error. This is an error, but it was, uh, it was not. Just don't look straight at it. The era, Google blind. Last night, plastic cheese is in to the nasty chat as well. And says the others are hotter than hoochie coochie. Yes, they are. They're beyond that. They're beyond that. They are at the, as I mentioned yesterday on the show, they're at the burger and a grape snow cone phase of this winning streak, as in the Dirty Dozen. If you've not yet subscribed to the Aki Breaky podcast, brought to you by the uh, the River Cree and the Mots Clamato Caesar right now, um, if you've not yet subscribed to that, you're going to want to. Two episodes ago, we dropped the filthiest episode we've ever done on that Chattahoochee. Was, that was fun. And now we're, we're smack dab in the middle of this back-to-back Reba set that this we're is, both totally regretting. This is not. Because all Reba McIntyre has done is is done uh, remakes of other songs and made them creepier. Dare I say fraud? Too soon? I don't think so. I mean, I think after doing the second Reba episode, which we're going to uh, hop in the old barn today and bang out, uh, I would say that we should be able to make a fair assessment on whether or not Reba McIntyre was a fraud by the end of the second episode. Reba back to back. It should have stuck to acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Season three of the AK Breaky podcast drops later on today. If you've not subbed that yet, the real not so slim shady says, "Love the bunny hug, Dusty. Where are you from, Saskatchewan?" <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is a nice hoodie. This is a real comfortable hoodie. You got yeah. a pocket. You got the uh, got, kangaroo got, pocket. Yeah, yeah, pouch yeah, yeah, there. yeah. This yeah, is real good. comfortable. Non zip. And the wet the the weather in the office here lately. Do we call it weather? The atmosphere, the temperature, climate. Maddie's been losing his. He's been losing his mind. He reset. He did a hard reset. Oh yeah, he was. The, uh, weren't you, Maddie? Weren't you thinking about changing the thermostat entirely? It out. Yeah, taking out the EcoBee and putting back the old one. Did you put in the EcoBee? No, they. Did. Oh, it was already it was here. here. Yeah, but the old one's in there, and it's. I don't. know. It, it doesn't. Is it work. More basic. Oh, the it old just, one doesn't work. It just. No, I have no. I. I have to do more than. Do we have that freedom to do that though? I have. Like the, we, why? Do, they, <laughs> it doesn't matter. We don't have heat. It seems <laughs> we hold nice and steady at twenty degrees. We can't go higher. We can't go lower. It seems. Except earlier this week when we well, got we came to, in the one day, it was like 24, it was 26 45. degrees. It yeah, got 26. up to 26. Was that that day when we were all here sweating yes, our nuts so off? you yeah. were extremely hungry. Oh, my God. And since then, it now, like, the heat never turns on. Thank God we have the sauna behind it, below us that keeps us warm at 20 degrees. Straight up. But it's, feel like, my office is cold. I yeah, can't it's work freezing. It. I, I slept in there the other day. It was freezing. Work. It's too cold. Too cold. And I, I can't you play. can't work in there? Is that why you've been out here doing yes. this? Because <laughs> I can't put a hoodie on or anything. <laughs> oh, yeah, because like it's sling. too hard. So oh, sling oh, arm. That's too bad. Oh, that is, uh, bad. That's a tough one, buddy. That's a tough one. That's <laughs> uh, kind of funny, though. Yeah, I've reset, you have no idea how many times I've reset that thing. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to work properly. <laughs> the, 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 the temperature in this office is just whatever it wants to be. Right. And the water as well, eh? as you well, find out. Yeah, and something's going on with the water. Because I've, had this, go, maybe, I've had this epic Maybe bout. it's the thermostat sets the temperature well, for the water. So, Maddie, the other day I was ice. just like, Maddie's like, you're drinking the, the guest water. I said, I can't get cold water out of the sink. I'm going to go check. And, and it, go, go, go check yeah, right now. Yeah. So if you turn it to the left, it's supposed to be warm. And today I had it turned to the right and cranked, and it was still warm. And you let it run. So I'm, I'm drinking yesterday's leftover water today, which I'm keeping... I, I, what did I say? He said, right is cold. Right is not cold. Right was warm today. So I'm drinking yesterday's water, and I'm keeping it off the desk so that Tommy Gazzola doesn't have a, a heart attack when he tunes in today. I think somebody said nice-looking desk this morning, and I'd have to agree. We're, it is a nice-looking keeping it very desk. streamlined. It's a nice-looking yeah, yeah. nice yeah. desk. Guys, I listen every day from Chilliwack. Pin it. Hey. Yes, we don't have Chilliwack pinned yet. We pinned another dozen places yesterday. It was great. Bruins, eh? Let R. us R. know R. where you're listening. Let us know where you're watching. If you're on TuneIn, EdmontonSportsTalk.com. In the nasty chat, everybody's fired up. What is it? One twelve in a row. Listening every day from Chilliwack. Pin it. Been listening since the Nielsen and Chase days. Yes. That's going back like 15 years. Funny story. Watching the game last night with my son, <laughs> who is eight. Hey, my son's eight. And does not listen every single day. But Drysaddle gets his second assist, and he's like, Dad, it's like the song. Dry, dry, dry. He'll probably score a goal and assist oh, on two. the lyrics? The full-blown Drysaddle. Before we get that water update, let's let's give you the Drysaddle goal song here. Dry, dry, dry. Dry, 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 dry. 
try, 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 try. Leon scored a goal tonight Watching him play is quite a sight You know this song is tied Oilers fans, come on You loved him endlessly Since he was drafted number three He's a center with a size That was born in Cologne Try to stop him, you can't do much more That ain't no lie You just want to see him shoot and score It was try, 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 try Gonna make a fool out of you Probably score a goal and assist on two You can't stop him and that ain't no lie Cause it's try, 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 try Don't even try to play him rough Leon is a German so you know he's tough His hands are crazy and Aikens loves his eyes Yeah, it's try, 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 try Gonna make a fool out of you Probably score a goal and assist on two You can't stop him and that ain't no lie Cause it's try, 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 try Don't even try to play him rough Leon is a German so you know he's tough His hands are crazy and Aikens loves his eyes Yeah, it's try, 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 try Leon Dreisaitl gets the job done for the Oilers last night. He was absolutely rolling. You can text us anytime. We do have your EM Utility uh, morning after show coming up here in the 6 o'clock hour. Uh, but Mike Johnson, look at this guy. He's locked and loaded. He's going to be ready to go a little bit early today, but it's brought to you by Pro-Am Sports, where they are sports nerds too. It's just a block north of the Yellowhead like we like to suggest sometimes. Go across the street, pick up some Arby's, take it in, and eat it with the cooks and boys. And, you know, I would love somebody to deliver a couple of uh, beef and cheds to, bag to of beef Ken and, and Jack today. Yeah. I think that would be excellent. So let's make that happen. And if you want to pick up some stuff when you go into Pro-Am, you can. You can visit them online at proamsports.ca as well. MJ, where are you at right now, buddy? Lounge, the Air Canada Lounge. I have a flight from Calgary back to Toronto so I can get a break from this frigid cold I've dealt with in Alberta with you guys the last couple of days. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're taking off. I got, I got rubes with me. We got the crew going back at a seven thirty flight, but always time to check in with you boys before I go. Yeah. Is, oh yeah. Eddie's not going back. Is he? He's going on vacation or something, isn't he? Well, our fearless leader. Producer, is he late? Um, no, no, he's oh. going, he took a red eye. He took a red oh. eye home last night because he has other places to go today. So God. It's, it's weird. Like, you know, for a lot of the crew that do the Leaf games on TSN, we have about a two and a half week break now between the All Star break, the Leaf break, and then just scheduling. So there's a chance for people to go do some other things. So Eddie is taking full advantage of that. How's Rubes doing? He's minding my stuff affairs for me. He's, it's <laughs> awfully early for Rubes, so he's you know he's quiet as he always is, but uh, he'll be all right. All right, tell us about the game that you worked last night. That's a big one for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Just how big was it? And, I mean, what else was going on outside of um, Austin Matthews lighting the world on fire? Oh, my goodness. It was actually another fun game, trip through Alberta. Um, you know, Toronto had lost four in a row, had the lead in every one of them. And what do you know? Of course, they get the lead once again. They get up 4-2. Austin Matthews, three goals, an assist. He could have had five or six points. Like, the Leafs are struggling to find their best game. But what they have is great players. And, and you know this in Edmonton as well. Yep. Like sometimes w- when you're not playing great, the greatness of the individual can carry the day. And for the Leafs last night, they needed Austin Matthews to be just ridiculous. The different kind of goals he scored, the the, the plays to get there, the, the, the strength, the, the finish, you name it. He picked up an assist as well. Um, so he rolls through. They're up 4-2. Then there's a couple of different long reviews. One – rule uh, that I was I, I knew that if you kick the puck in even it hits an opponent or hits another person it doesn't count but if you kick the puck in and it hits anybody's stick in any way that's a good goal so I can kick it and if it hits your skate on the opposition's team and goes in no goal but if I can kick it and it hits your <laughs> stick and goes in goal so that was <laughs> one that was a bit of an eye opener to me so that was a, a goal that made it 4-2 and then they had a goal that made it 4-3 and it was one of the ones guys where there was a glove pass, but not directly leading to the goal. It was like 20 seconds prior to the goal. And it wasn't even a catch and a pass. It was like Blake Coleman tried to grab it, hit, yep. hit off his fingertips, and went to somebody holding the blue line, clearly off his hand, but like not even a pass. It just sort of – he tried to grab it, but didn't do a very good job of it. And the Leafs were not sure. 
And so we're doing the game and we're wondering, what are they challenging? It's like nowhere near offside. There's nobody near the goalie. What are they looking for? And all of a sudden you rewind it, rewind it. Oh, there it is. This little deflection. And the Leafs called a timeout to get more time. Oh, wow. The review guys come through. They challenge it. It would have made it 4-4. No goal. Take it away. And after the game, as I'm walking out, I see the the, the review court, re, video review coordinator go, ushered into the room <laughs> to like massive celebrational cheers. Like he almost got, if it weren't for Austin Matthews, he would have got like the old WWF belt because <laughs> he was the star of the night. It was, an, it was an unbelievably good call and good find by the Leafs thing. So, um yeah it, so it was an adventurous game but um good on the least for winning break the slide calgary's been playing well and austin matthews trying to fend off sam reinhardt of all people to yeah. get that goal scoring lead yeah which is wild reinhardt's having a hell of a run we'll get to the flames in just a second mm-hmm. the oilers last night fall behind two nothing to seattle again and then basically just take over the hockey game come back from the video come back and beat them from the video coaches as well yeah. they got it off that was a pretty mm-hmm. blatant offside that that would that had to be called back at that point it would have been three three at the time the oilers end up hanging on there they were down two against the maple leafs came back as well you know they've now allowed two goals or less in nine or 10 straight games. You just got a good first hand look at the Oilers. Are, are we crazy to say the Oilers are now a sound defensive club? No, not crazy at all. Because there's one thing to say they're not giving up a lot of goals because their goaltender is playing amazing. Now, Stuart Skinner is playing really well, but that's not the sole reason that the pucks are not going in. You look at all the metrics and the chances and the shots and the expected goals, and they all have gone way down. The penalty kill has gone way up. Yeah, the foundation, like as great as Edmonton is, and we can talk about McDavid and Drysdale, and we will, you don't run off 12 in a row because you score a lot. Yeah, You run off 12 in a row because you keep them out. Keeping them out is what gets them a chance to win a game in Chicago when they get 14 shots. Like keeping them out is what keeps you in every game. And then the talent and the system allows you to get the three goals that you need or four or five, whatever. But keeping it to two gives you a chance in today's NHL every single night. So, no, this is – it's amazing what has happened in, in Edmonton, that they've gone on this tear. They're now in third place. Like, forget about the wild card. They're within whatever it is, five or six of Vegas with three or four games yeah. in hand. Like, if they're to win every game in hand, which who knows, they just might, they would be in second place. Like, that's how crazy this run is. But it's been based on defense, penalty killing, and good goaltending, which has not always been the case when, when Edmonton plays really well. That sounds amazing to hear you say that the Oilers are winning games based on good defense, well, penalty killing, and goaltending. The, like, the, the, like I know the power play scored a sweet one. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. was a pretty slick. Like, but the power play has not been lighting the. No, world it hasn't. Fire. You're right. Five, six, seven games. So it's not like the, the power play is at forty percent. It's it's actually quite a bit less than that. So no, it is. It's amazing. And you know, improving defensively is is quite a task. But they were good at times defensively last year. But the penalty kill. Like, how the penalty kill goes from one of the worst in the league, like 70%, Dusty, is not good. I know. And they go up now, they're whatever, 87%. Mark Stewart deserves a lot of credit for being the architect of that penalty kill that's been so good for Edmonton. Mike, I just want to get your thoughts, too, on last night in the Flames, kind of straddling that great divide in the Western wildcard chase as well, 7-3 mm-hmm. and three over their last 10. Do the Oilers stretch it to that Baker's dozen then tomorrow night down in Calgary, or what did you see from that team down there last night? They played well. I mean, I could see, like, they did not give up very much. Like, Austin, obviously, individually made some great things, but he scored a sick goal through his legs. He had a six-on-five goal on a delayed penalty. He had a four-on-three goal on a, on a weird special team situation, and then he got another one. So, like, you know, they didn't give up a lot of five-on-five to Toronto Maple Leafs, but neither did Edmonton a couple of nights ago. I do think Edmonton does extend it because Edmonton's playing that well right now. The one wild card is that Ladar played again last night, and while he has played well as of late, Jacob Markstrom has really been upping his game over the last few weeks. He got injured in practice. He missed a few games. There's a chance, I would say a good chance, that he plays against Edmonton. And if you put Markstrom in net, that kind of team, it's going to be tough. But um, the way Edmonton is going right now, and if Edmonton gets a second line that is beyond, that is beyond like Fogel and Kane to go with what Nugent Hopkins and yeah. like, David and Hyman can do, look out. Because like that is... That is going to be really challenging to, to, to stack up. And, uh, you know, it was Dry Saddle's big night and Fogel's big night. It wasn't McDavid's group. And when that happens, Edmonton's really, really tough to play against. I still would have taken McDavid over one and a half points last night. That one really killed. That killed a little parlay yeah, for yeah. us around the office here. But what are you going to do? Oh, uh, Dusty. Yeah. yeah. My, my, pick, my Euler pick on two, two nights ago, though, 
I had a goal in the first 10 minutes and a Marner assist as part of my props. And then Marner got an assist 27, 27 seconds in. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> Mystic, <laughs> Mike, Mystic Mike. Mystic Mike strikes again. Unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> all right, MJ. We, early. Yeah, we appreciate you sliding in a little bit early here today. Give Rubes a big hug for me. Tell him I love him and uh, safe travels. All right, guys. Talk to you soon. There you I'll go. That you. is uh, Mike Johnson, NHL analyst. Brought to you a little bit early today. He is flying out, but joined us from the lounge down at the Calgary airport. Brought to you by Pro-Am Sports. And, uh, yeah, we were on a little uh, exact score one last night. Uh, me, MJ, a couple other guys on that Leafs Flames game. We had it 5-2 exact score. And, uh, unfortunately, the Leafs didn't get it done. Cam Rangel made his hands look so big, hey? He's Maybe he's got huge mitts. Like Maybe he's got huge mitts. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, Dave Naylor at 7.30. Steinberg on the Flames at 8.20. Curly getting juniors. Cur- Cur- Curly getting junior. Sounds like at, a uh, Did I say junior? Sounds like an Arby's menu It or does, something. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, he'll be by around 8.30. Uh, Maddie, you went and checked the water at the sink. What's what's going on over there, buddy? I have never seen anything like that. Yeah, I, I don't know. Is it just a morning thing? Like, it happens it's, to me every morning. It's warm everywhere. Do we, for, do we need water? For a brief water second, second that got cold, it got, like, a slightly cool, and then went right back to warm. Yeah. Our, like, our water all, in the sink in the kitchen is only coming out hot. I tried just, like, moving it by, like, a quarter. Like, just yeah. slowly, not going to the extremes of right and left, just slowly moving it across, and, and still no. No. Have you ever seen, like, usually it would be like, oh, the hot water's not working, and you only get cold. Yeah. I've never seen the cold water not working, and you only get hot. That whole unit's a little loose, though, hey? Like something. Yeah. Again, it doesn't I mean, stretch over into far enough into the big sink. Is that right? If you turn it over and try to wash something in the big sink, it, like, only, like, gets a portion of it and stuff. Splash and it around. You know what, you know what I think you this do. might be? I wonder if, if you dirty the sink, you have to wipe it around. I wonder if, like, whatever the connect connector doohickey is. Yeah, underneath is not like we're just moving the handle and we're not technically moving the thing that needs to turn to change it from cold to hot. Maybe that's what it is. We'll get Tommy in there. Yeah, yeah, Tom, the Tommy. Side. Tommy's uh, he's a pretty boy, yeah. but he's a handy man. Plumber by trade. Yeah, because of the days at Costco. <laughs> so uh, we'll we'll get into that. Uh, good to catch up with MJ today. Calgary Flames, Edmonton. How exciting is this? The Oilers go for thirteen straight at the Dome. On Saturday night. Bring on Markstrom. Why not, you know? Get at it. The Skinner play in that game? You got you to gotta go Skinner in the Battle of Alberta on a Saturday night, Hockey do you not? Canada, yeah, a whole bit. Here. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Pickard's got a game next week, right? Well, he would get Columbus or Chicago. Yeah, Hell, you, so you don't have to worry about those that. Teams. Yeah. You don't have to, and then you're on a bye week. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. You, you play Skinner this one. You play Skinner in the second game next week. I can't remember how it goes. Is it Columbus, Chicago? I think it goes Columbus, Chicago. But whatever the Tuesday game is, I think you go Pickard and Thursday you go against with Skinner, and then he gets the break. Yeah. That could make sense. What say you? 780-218-9999. Uh, I love this text. JCD780 says, guys, the uh, mixing valve is stuck. I guarantee it's not called a mixing, mixing valve. Mixing valve. And he's trying, he's trying to take us for a bit of a ride here. I'm pretty sure mixing valve is not a thing. Or it might be a thing. <laughs> I never know this stuff. Uh, all right, we've got the EM. Is no, it- there's a thing called the mixing valve. What? No. Yeah. Do sinks need mixing valves? Without the regulation of a mixing valve, the water might flow from your shower head, both bath faucet or sink, and cause you injury. <laughs> that's for injury? Something. That's for, So that's just the Google question there. So, no, they do have mixing valves. Uh, Troy texts and it says, Tommy will get right on that sink at 9.07 when he shows up today. <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, hangout today, by the way, good one. Murray McCourt, Jay Milne, EST glue guy. Those boys are going to be in with you, Maddie. And is Tommy going to be in too? Well, the Oilers don't practice till noon. They don't noon. practice till noon. We got to do so, oil stream at noon. Yeah, so I'm assuming so, Tommy probably yeah. be in today. He did was a couple days ago. He was. But we'll find out. That'll be fun. Uh, all right, EM Utility uh, locating morning after show coming up. Let's get to a sports update for Green Plan. And uh, we will come back, get into that good morning after show song, break down the game, dive into it. Lots of things coming out of it. Did you see Kane's limp? See Kane's limp coming always, out of the room. It's always banged up, eh? Still managed to find a way to produce, and he said it was about opportunity. So we'll get into that a little bit to get uh, some uh, post-game uh, video rolling in here as well. Like I said, you can text us anytime. Parachutes inbox, 780-218-9999, or hit us up in the nasty chat this morning. 12 in a row for your red-hot Edmonton Oilers. A chance to make it 13 against the Calgary Flames. Post-game show was absolutely incredible last night. You were riding here with Edmonton Sports Talk. We are coming at you from the Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen Studio. Somebody yesterday during Two Guys and Goalie text in, and they had the whole meal just laid out, laid out in front of them. It was uh, it was incredible. 
It looked absolutely delicious. The Popeye's meal, the Oilers meal, that'll get you that Hyman Collector's Cup. Pick those up at Popeye's today. Edmonton Oilers now sitting third in the Pacific, a point up on the Kings with a game in hand following their 12th straight win, 4-2 over the visiting Kraken. Leon Dreisaitl, a four-point night as Warren Fogel notched a pair of goals. Oilers look for win 13 in a row tomorrow night down in Calgary. Last night, it was the Leafs over the Flames, 4-3 snap in Calgary's four-game win streak. Austin Matthews with the hat trick. Preds topping the Kings 2-1. LA have lost 10 of its last 11. Vegas over the Rangers 5-1. Golden Knights have won 3 of 4. And the Canucks taming the Coyotes 2-1. Your final Vancouver, the first club to reach the 30-win mark. Four games around the AJHL tonight, including the Sherwood Park Crusaders at home to Camrose. NBA last night saw the Raptors with a 116-110 loss to the Chicago Bulls. Eight games around the NBA tonight. Raps visit the Knicks tomorrow evening. Oil Kings back on the ice tonight. They'll welcome in the Prince Albert Raiders to Rogers Place. Puck drop 7 o'clock. Golden Bears and Pandas basketball. They're on the road this weekend visiting Fraser Valley for a pair. You can join the entire Edmonton Sports Talk crew for Super Bowl 58. We'll be at the Centric Casino Sports Bar and Lounge, Centric Casino Fort Road for the big game on February 11th. Menu items under $10, drink specials, and your chance at prizes throughout the day. And also to meet the one and only Rene. This sports update brought to you by Green Plan. Providing you with award-winning environmental planning and consulting services. Whether it's municipal, industrial, or residential, plan it right with Green Plan. Visit green-plan.com or give them a call 780-455-4292. There's something happening here The Oilers look a lot better this year Another win, put two points on the board Telling me your faith is restored I think it's time you stop, listen, here we go Wake up with the morning after show This year's team's looking strong Connor and Leon, they can't do no wrong Six o'clockers are losing their minds Getting so many messages on the text line Think it's time you stop, listen, here we go Wake up with the morning after show All right, the Edmonton Oilers make it 12 wins in a row. They have been absolutely on fire, and I still can't get used to hearing Mike Johnson say that this is a team that has won these 12 games in a row on the strength of goaltending, defense, and penalty killing. And, you know, that's insane. let them have the opening period, right? (laughs) Yeah, go Go ahead. ahead. Well, we just need two, just just the final two. Thank you. Go ahead. That's all you need. Uh, Jack Michaels last night after the game tweeted this out: The Oilers have outscored their opposition twenty-four to six in the third period in overtime during the twelve-game winning streak. They have not allowed more than three shots in the last ten minutes of any of their past four wins. That is tidy. This is what the Edmonton Oilers have become. And then they still have the firepower when called upon, which makes them extremely, extremely, extremely dangerous. Rip City Step with an astute text. Get down early, then knob adjustments, and then victory. Yeah. You know, you get down early, fiddle with a few knobs, and, uh, you know, pun intended. All right, let's get into your EM Utility locating morning after show. Visit them, www.emutilitylocating.com. If you got some work going on down below, GPR and concrete scanning, damage prevention, that's the last thing you want to do. Damage things, right? Start digging away. Oh, don't worry. I don't need anybody. I know what I'm doing here. Ah! You're electrocuted. You've hit a pipeline. There's water everywhere. Maybe there's even sewage everywhere. Get the gas. And you're thinking to yourself, man, I should have gone to EM Utility Locating. 
Damage prevention, planning, designing, education, and training. So, do you say hit the gas? Hit the gas, eh? Oh, that's that a dangerous gas. line right there. Bing, and that's bing. one of that. That's like probably the line you want to hit the least. I don't know. I don't know about all the danger of the lines underneath. That's why you go to EM Utility Locating. Go see Matt and his team over there. Maybe EMUtilityLocating.com. Get the boys in. They can locate that mixing valve that we've been yeah. hearing so much about. Yeah, yeah. Can... I wonder if uh, Matty can find the uh, mixing valve on our sink. Let's see if we can get that, uh, that sorted out. Because it <laughs> does it appear to be broken <laughs> okay. right now. That's the one, boys. You ah, guys are damn. the pros. Yeah. <laughs> Should have known. Should have known. EST, big moment that happened. What are you going with? I'm going to say that video review just because of how, you know, how it's been going as of late with video reviews and such. And Hyman getting a dislike. Hyman gets the fourth, which is, again, just following a video review that a goal would have tied things yeah. up. I mean, who, go who knows how it goes from there. But uh, I just think... Uh, it's kind of tongue-in-cheek stuff that, you know, they, they do get a review, right? I mean, Knobloch saying uh, it, in, in terms of Noah Siegel and Mike Finelli, they're the ones that recommended doing it or not. Ultimately, I make the last decision, but they're the ones who picked it up. They gave me the advice. I just followed my orders. So I don't get any credit on that. That's all the video staff. It's just nice to see a, a video call executed like that. I know everybody, where's Kupal? Where's Kupal when you need him, right? It was kind of, he was the savior last year in these situations. Well, they get one, and it was a goal that would have tied things up, as you said. I mean, it's not, yeah. but you still have to go through the process. And then for Hyman to get one on the power play, icing things, uh, I, I just think that whole, uh, and maybe, even just maybe, how things are going, letting them score two in the first because that's how they're winning. This is how they do things. So, I don't know, a funny old game, but uh, it, it was one that, you know, we said kind of, I, I made mention that maybe the emotion from from Tuesday and that playoff type of atmosphere, they may not come out guns yeah, blazing. Yeah, a little bit which, of a letdown you know, early, and, like. I, so, whatever. I mean, again, it's not how you start. It's how they finish the game. And clearly with the stats that you brought up, courtesy Jack Michaels, that's what they're doing right now. So, I kind of thought the whole video review and then I'm going off to put it away. Uh, those are my big moments of the evening. Yeah, it's it's weird because, you know, the video review goal being called off on a clear offside. Yeah, I would have made it 3-3, but... I still don't think that matters. No, no. We, you know, like that's, you're that, not but, in, in worry there. No, anything, well, but it, is, it would have still, you know. This is the point that I'm trying to get across here is that this team doesn't get rattled anymore. Like, if Tanev scores on that third breakaway, they've already scored on two breakaways. If they score on the third breakaway and go down 3 nothing, once again, I would say that I don't know if that matters. With the way that they're playing right now, they just keep pushing and pushing and pushing, and force their way back into that hockey. Maybe maybe overtime is required, if that's the case. I guess so, the question is, is it sustainable for the... But... Well, are they supposed to be... Like, are they going to win every single game for the rest of the season? No. no. They got to stay healthy. Um, but, but certainly learning these things and getting that, that tool for when you need it is, is, is going to be important. There will be nights like that where you do have to claw back and stuff, and they're showing in spades that they can do it, which, as you mentioned, is not a... Typical DNA of this of this team over the last few yeah. years or whatever. This is the this is the first time it's a little strange in the McDavid era where we would describe this team winning this on the strength of goaltending, defense, and penalty kill. That just hasn't happened before. I don't even bother looking it up. Like that just hasn't been said prior to this this stretch with Knobloch taking over. Uh, you can always play along if you're watching or listening right now as we go through our key moments here and all of the aspects of the em utility locating morning after show uh the super stat of the night what are you going with rick there's a handful again and i, I feel like i'm cheating every every segment in question in here because as you're looking for one answer and i can provide you a few i mean dry saddle four points that's big warren fogel two goals with his brother in attendance i mean that's just a great story yeah the fogel one really jumps uh, off the page but whenever we can right i mean we got to kind of go to the uh the uh, 926 926 926 926 9 Nine two six for Stewie skins again. Just as you expect. Last night, much like falling behind early and, and clawing back. I mean, this is save percentage in the uh, in the low to mid nineties now is just an every night occurrence now for one Stuart Skinner. Eh? Eh. You can have your Markstroms, right? It's it's pretty damn impressive what he's been doing between the pipes with the help yes. of the team Asterisk. in front of him. Exactly, they were an absolute train wreck defensively. To start the season. Uh, super sad of the night. Look at Leon Dreisaitl tonight. He had a goal. He had three assists, four points, plus one, four shots. The line, hey? 92.9% on the draw last night for Leon Dreisaitl. The Oilers absolutely owned the faceoff dot last night. 68% to 32%. 
Leon Dreisaitl leading the way, though, with 92.9% efficiency in the face-off circle last night. Very impressive. The Oilers are hotter than blank. Let's play that this morning. Fill in the blank. 780-218-9999. We've, we've surpassed burger and grape snow cone. Yeah, right? they're, they're, they're <laughs> definitely beyond hotter than a coochie coochie. It's like the night lights went down in Georgia type of deal. <laughs> <laughs> the Oilers are hotter than blank. Fill that in. Get creative. Have some fun. Could get yourself in the mix for text of the day from A and W. The three stars of the hockey game last night. Fogel, Dreisaitl, Skinner. In that order, who's your fourth star of the hockey game? Fogel, Dreisaitl, and Skinner in that order, hey? And, uh, well, uh, yeah, Vander Kane, two assists. Also, 100% in the dot. <laughs> yeah, I, Matthias Janmark was <laughs> yeah, 100% yeah, yeah, in the yeah. faceoff circle. Well, you know, and Hamlin, of course, uh, 75 as well. So that adds to the whole team. But, yeah, Vander Kane with a pair of assists. We had the uh, Captain Hunch had the Kane point, correct? When Kane goal, we shaved it down to the Kane point. Yeah. Unfortunately, didn't connect with the, with the McDavid part We needed of that. McDavid over one and a half but, to hit uh, like a plus 650 parlay last yeah. night. Two assists for Kane. Why not? In his elevated role, right? This is what happens. <laughs> Least valuable player of the game last night, the 38th star of the game, Alexander Wenberg, 22 and a half minutes. Part of that Columbus Blue One Jackets shot, squad, hey? Nothing else there. He was on that Blue Jackets <laughs> team that the Oilers are trying to track down. The Oilers are chasing the history of the Columbus Blue Jackets right now, who won 16 in a row. The Oilers did move into a tie with the Montreal Canadiens for most games won in a row by a Canadian club sitting at 12 right now. I think you got to go back to the late 60 Habs for that one. And at that point, they pretty much could have beaten every team in the league twice in the uh, 12 gamer. Vance Van Vandervan coming in hot here. The Oilers are hotter than the water at EST headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that one's uh, uh, that one's, uh, that's pretty obvious. Real that's a good man. one. The Oilers are hotter than blank. Fill that in. At 780-218-9999. We're going to get a little post game here coming up. We got Fogel and Kane. Okay, well, we'll get to uh, we'll get to one of those. We'll go, maybe we'll go with Evander Kane. Um, but before that, the EM Utility Locating Steady Eddie of the Evening, www.emutilitylocating.com to check them out. Uh, this is not so much the Steady Eddie of the Evening, but I'm going to tie it into, and he's always steady. So I'm going to give it to Matthias Ekholm. But only to get to the conversation of, did you see his dad face in the penalty box? My God. It was full-blown phrase at that ball <laughs> hockey tournament a few years ago. Like, Ekholm sitting in the box, and he's looking, and he's just giving it to Yanni Gore. Like, he's, oh, it was, it was very dad face-ish. You do not want to mess with Matias Ekholm, man. I think somebody tweeted that's... Uh... Gazzola, when Nielsen puts anything on the on the desk. <laughs> that, that's really good. That's a good point. Matthias Ekholm face was just like, and I think he said like next time or so. Like, the fingers up. Oh, you don't wanna, man. Yeah. When you get that finger the going. Finger. <laughs> Jeez Louise. He only brings that out in certain occasions, right? The, the Oilers are hotter than blank. Fill that in. 780-218-9999 here on a Friday. Uh, all right. Here's a Vander Kane after the game. Two assists. As he settles back in on Leon Drysaddle's wing. But your team's showing a real nice resilience here. So where's kind of that line between wanting it to stop, but also being happy with their ability to do that? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to win uh, 12 games in a row, you're going to be down in games, and uh, we've we've done it a couple of times in this win streak, and um, you know we've we've kept teams, uh, you know, two three goals. What did you make of uh, just? Yeah, the atmosphere of fans seem so um, just excited to be a part of this win streak and trying to you know, cheer you on and, and do their part. Yeah, yeah, we've uh, we haven't had a lot of time at home, um, so uh, to have a couple of games and kind of finish off uh, at home here before the break uh, is nice. And obviously, uh, we love playing in front of our home fans. A lot of, sorry, a lot of fireworks in this game. What did you make of the, of the third period? Yeah, I mean. Uh, it's NHL. You're going to have uh, guys that are feisty. Um, you know, obviously we didn't love the hit on Eki there. Uh, but um, I'm sure we'll see these guys again. Your thought on the, on the line between you, Leon, and Warren? There's a lot of size there and kind of what you think is working. Just getting an opportunity. 
Bender, it's, you've been kind of battling nagging injuries uh, here and there all season. Can you, how important or how welcome will you forget that break coming up? Uh, do you need some time off? Uh, just trying to feel better each and every day. Do you, you guys usually play it pretty cool with these streaks. And, you know, we're just trying to play it day by day and all that. But you got a 12-game win streak here. When does it become something that, you know, it's pretty cool? When do you start to think about it more? Um, I don't know if we really think about it as a, as a group in terms of, uh, I think maybe at the end of the season or, you know, when your career is over, you think about some win streaks you've had over the, over the years. Uh, obviously this is the one I, this is the longest one I've ever been a part of. Um, but, uh, you know, we want to keep it going, uh, as long as we can. We, we, uh, didn't get off to a great start. So, uh, you know, obviously this streak has propelled us into a position where we, we want to be and, and, uh, you know. We want to catch some teams that are still ahead of us. Maybe a thought on the fact that, you know, during this streak, your power play has not carried your team. Uh, I would say you know, Connor McDavid's played very well, but he's not had a bunch of five-point nights. You guys have made a lot of points up here without two of the traditional things that wins game for you, games for you. Yeah, I, I think uh, it's a good template um, because when it counts uh, in the postseason, um, you know, you can't rely on your power play to, to win your series and, and, and win games each and every night. Uh, you know, you got to do it five on five, and um, it's definitely nice to see that uh, that happen uh, throughout this 12-game win streak so far. Vander, uh, pride night here. How, how important is it to this team and to, to, to show this rink as being a welcoming, inclusive place? Yeah, um, you know, ever since I've gotten here, uh, the city of Edmonton and, and uh, this organization has, has always been... Uh, open and, and welcoming and inclusive and uh, obviously uh, with a night like tonight uh, that was no different so it was great to be a part of there you go that is Evander Kane two assists uh, noticeable limp when they were coming onto the ice I don't know if you guys saw that video uh, popping around last night I was almost using his stick like a cane no pun intended uh, as he comes out there so he's obviously grinding through a few things right now and uh, hopefully get some rest here yeah. coming up in the uh, near future aren't we all hey yeah yeah, yeah, everybody's always it's got that a little post something. Christmas, mid January. Yeah, like, you're like ah, this is yeah. All right, lots of good text messages rolling in on the Oilers are hotter than blank. We'll get to a few more of those just after seven o'clock. More storylines um, from this hockey game after seven o'clock, including: Do you think Warren Fogle can play well enough to just maintain that spot in the top six? I mean, who else is going to take it away from him right now? We'll get in. Uh, we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, the others are hotter than Jennifer Aniston's strip tease scene in We're the Millers. Well, maybe not. That comes in from uh, Richard today. I would probably agree with the maybe not part. Uh, some other guy had chimed in and said, guys, I was joking about it in the nasty chat last night that maybe Stuart Skinner scores a goal here at some point. And then he sent me the link to when Stuart Skinner scored a goal when he was a member of the Lethbridge Hurricanes, which was an all-time goalie goal call. Uh, which I'm going to play here off of YouTube shortly. Uh, this goal call is from one of my buddies, Dustin Forbes, who's the still the voice of the Lethbridge Hurricanes. Forbesy, Forbesy, Forbesy. Come, we we golf together. We go on a golf trip every year in the summer. Forbesy's a beauty. He can be a little bit of a mess sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, this is this is when Stuart Skinner scored a goal back with the uh, Lethbridge Hurricanes. Let's take a peek here. Try and get back in the game. They need the points. Here's Skinner looking for the empty net. Rolling, rolling. He scores! Stuart Skinner. Unbelievable. Stuart Skinner has a goal. Oh, my. Oh, wow. Rolling. Rolling. <laughs> and he's going to do the flyby. <laughs> yes. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Oh, pre -roach, eh? it was That's that was pre Roach when that puck hit the empty net. It sounded a little Roachy, did it? Did it not? <laughs> it sounded just Roachy for a minute right when it hit the net. Listen to that one more time. You'll be able to pick up the moment when he almost went full Doug Roach. They need the points here. Skinner looking for the empty net, rolling, rolling. He scores, Stuart Skinner, right there. Unbelievable. That's Doug Roach when Forbes he says, Stuart Skinner. His nemesis got him. <laughs> oh, man, Forbes, he's a beauty, though. And, uh, yeah, Stuart Skinner. I mean, many of you would have known that. Some of you might not have. But Stuart Skinner put one in the back of the net when he's playing with the Lethbridge Hurricanes 
in the uh, in the Western Hockey League, which is a lot of fun. And yes, in case you were wondering, Forbesy and the Lethbridge Radio Crew did take that rolling, rolling and mix it in over Lip Biscuits. Rolling, rolling, yeah. rolling, rolling. It was, uh, that was good Back stuff. Back in the day. Hey, that yeah, was good stuff. Uh, the Oilers are hotter than blank. Keep those coming in. It's going to help you begin the mix. For text of the day today, which is for A and W. Let's dive into that bad boy right now, shall we? Spicy dill. The spicy dill pickle mama burger. It's back, baby, with a creamy, spicy dill pickle sauce. It's a pickle party. Available for a limited time only and only at A&W. We love A&W. They love us. We chatted yesterday about the branding. Yeah. Of A&W with this uh, research company that's kind of doing some stuff for A&W right now. They came by yesterday, and that was just a fun chat. Anytime, we, nice to, uh, anytime we can take a trip down you know, memory lane with A&W, it's a great time. Unlocking some deep memories and stories yeah. around the uh, around the restaurant franchise. Yeah. And they taught us some stuff American side, too, which I hadn't known. Like how yeah, yeah it was to, wild. A&W is like a major, major player in Canada. And it's much different how they approach it down in the United yeah. States. So we're I was lucky. not aware of that. So yesterday we were talking to these research guys from New. They were from New York City, <laughs> the Big Apple. And I just kept saying, "Wow, the Big Apple boys! <laughs> this is so cool." Uh, all right, should we? Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, they, they are the they, call it. they are the Big Apple boys. I mean, that's uh, I don't think that's going to surprise anybody. Uh, all right, let's crack some packs for Wayne Sports Cards here. You see a card store on the side of the road, you think, gotta tweet it to the crack pack. Crack pack, yeah, yeah. I'm tracking down all the young guns today. Looking for the young guns today. Looking for the young guys today. I got me a card. A heck of a pull, and we're tweeting it out to the crack pack. I got me a canvas, it's worth about 20, so hurry up and sell it to get more money. The crack pack is a little game where we can crack together. Crack pack, baby. A crack pack, baby. Crack pack, baby. Crack rolling. Rolling. Uh, all right, let's dive into what we got for the Crack Pack today. Obviously, Crack Pack brought to you by Wayne's Sports Cards, just north of West Edmonton Mall. One of my favorite places in the entire city. Uh, that My Crack Pack is back. The Crack Pack Facebook group is back up and running. Banged out a break on Sunday. Did another one on Wednesday. Popping by Wayne's later today to pick up some cards to break on Sunday. If you're not yet a member of the Crack Pack Facebook group, just search Crack Pack Breaks on Facebook, and you can join us over there. I'm, I'm contemplating. Hockey breaks always do extremely well, but I, I kind of want to do an NFL break on Sunday night. Ooh. Bills and Chiefs are going. Just slide on in. Do some NFL rookie card hunting. That'd be a lot of fun. So here's what we have today. Uh, this is a blaster box of Upper Deck Series 2 from 22-23. So let's dive into these bad boys. And then I got something a little special I found just laying around the room. I don't know. This, this was just laying in my basement. Two packs of SmackDown cards from, like, the Attitude Era uh, I can't believe laying down there unopened. I, I just... I know. I know. It's amazing. All right. How many packs we got here? Boys, we got seven again. All right. Mr. Lean. You going to be opening a pack with one arm? On the, look at that. Hey. A horrible throw. Jeez. Sorry, buddy. That was bad. Uh, all right, boys. Let's, uh, let's, let's get into this here. Here we go. Going young gun hunting here. Brandon Biro, young gun. Austin Matthews, old poppy himself. <laughs> I still can't get over that name for Austin Matthews. Oh, Poppy. It just doesn't make sense to me. Oh, Poppy. Jake Christensen, rookie portrait. Nice looking yeah, card that's there. A nice looking card. CBJ in, in town next Miller, week. Teddy Bluger. Tyson Berry. Man, another young gun. Two for two. John Lazat. Who else we got here? Matty Barzell. I have followed Jake Ottinger. I can't wait to get to those wrestling cards. This is 22-23, Series 2. Slavkowski, Young Guns. Dyson Mayo. There's this Johnson for Calder, Kent Johnson, Columbus Blue Jackets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really weird. I've never seen something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's one of the subsets, Manny. 
So is Tyson Berry the only Oiler we pulled? Not getting anything in this pack. Did you guys uh, pull an Oiler? I already cracked through. I got my Dyson Mayo, the Oil King. I mean, ah, it doesn't count. <laughs> getting uh, close. It doesn't count. Getting close. Panarin, Provorov, Shiri, Tavares. Ah, Yuri Slavkovsky, Dazzler. Oh, that's a nice one. Green, 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 uh, green Dazzler of Johnny Slavkovsky. Yeah. I know, I know, I know, but don't say it. We need a card cam. But uh, yeah, Slavkovsky. That's real nice. Real nice. All right, beauty. Let's uh, now let's get into the main event. The main event. Ding, ding. Rick, you can pick which one you want. Woo. I'm just hoping for some stone colds. I'm hoping for some rocks, some give me mankinds. A, give me a Gilberg. Oh, dude, that'd be amazing. Remember <laughs> when I took Gilberg? <laughs> How could I forget? All right, who do we got here? Oh my God, Stone Cold with its foot on McMahon. Look at that, and these are great. These They're like are, chrome, yeah. and there's nothing. It's just the picture, and then hardcore and Holly hitting the road dog with a piece of sheet metal. <laughs> oh, you didn't know? I got Triple H dropping a chair on the head of Kane. These are great. I, Shane O'Mac about to drop an elbow on X-Pac. I guess Shane O'Mac on top of oh, that. Oh, that's, that's the follow yeah, card. Yeah, yeah. It has to be. Oh, the Godfather. Hey, Pimpin' what? 80s. No. Pimpin' 80s. That and, did not age well. All aboard the whole train, But it's, right? like, it's like a red one. This is like a fancy... Look at this Godfather one of one. card. One of, <laughs> look at this road What a time. Card. Oh, that's, God. Yeah, these... If you're a wrestling fan, man, these, are, these SmackDown cards. Jeff, yeah. Jeff Blackman. You remember him? <laughs> this is, uh, I think this is Shane O'Mac in a wheelchair after Stone Cold poured cement on his car. That's Vince, yeah, in the Corvette. And he poured all the... Uh, yeah, but that's not... Is that Vince in the chair? Yeah. Oh, he looks yeah, yeah, so yeah. young there. He looks oh, yeah. like Shane O'Mac's side profile. And that cement profile. went in, the, the yeah, windows yeah. burst and everything. I got Kane giving uh, Mr. Ass Billy Gunn a choke. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are great. Yeah, these are amazing I forgot cars, Blackman man. existed. These are Steve awesome Blackman, cars. Steve Blackman, yeah. I don't even... Yeah. Smackdown Chromium Edition. Brilliant stuff. Always preferred Papa Shango, to be honest. Over it. God, God, yeah. But. Can you imagine them rolling out that Godfather bit now? <laughs> like, that just would well, not fly. No chance. Yeah, Steve, Steve Black. Guys, the Oilers are hotter than the A&W Creamy Dill Pickle Sauce. That's a, that's a good one. Keep those rolling in. If you want to win text of the day from a w get your ticket to a w uh, Why not? Dave's in says the others are hotter right now than that one chip challenge. I can never do that one chip challenge. Never tried it. There's no, I just don't think you, I can. You've never done do it, it, though? We should, we should do it sometime. No. Postal show. No. Beef Nips wants NFL Prism. Oh, for the uh, crack pack yeah. on. Uh, Make that that's, a, yeah. that's a pricey, uh, pricey card. I see card, but we will uh, see what we can do on that front. All right, the Edmonton Oilers are red hot. How hot are they? Well, they're hotter than blank. Fill that in at 780-218-9999 in the Paris Jewelers inbox. We'll get to some of those uh, responses coming up. We'll dive into it a little bit. Uh, if Evander Kane is walking with a limp, you got to find a way to give him some time off. Can Warren Fogel remain in the top six? Are, is Connor McDavid... In the running for the Hart Trophy right now. Threw that out last night. You saw a lot of McKinnons, a lot of Kucherovs, a lot of Connor Hellebucks, but not many Connor McDavid's. With that being said, half a season still to go. And we say it all the time. It doesn't matter what awards they win in the regular season. All that matters is they take a run at the Stanley Cup. So who really cares when it's all said and done? Uh, we'll get into that. If you're looking for some sports cards, though, go to Wayne's just north of West Edmonton Mall. Go see Wayne and his team in there. They would uh, love to see you. And uh, you can't get in and out of there without talking a bunch of sports with their crew, either, which is uh, which is a lot of fun. Legos, Pogs. Tons of stuff. Lots of other yeah, things tons as of stuff. well. Yeah. Magic cards, Mag comic exactly. books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Elf cards. Funko Elf Pops. With an A. Yeah, there's lots going on there. Uh, all right, on the way next... Dave Naylor is going to join us around 7.30. Cool bet hotline of the day coming up featuring an appearance from Mr. Lean as well. But let's get to a sports rewind with LTE. Oilers now moving into third spot in the Pacific. They're a point up on the Kings with a game in hand following last night's 4-2 win over the Kraken. Make it the club's 12th straight victory. Leon Dreisaitl. Four-point evening, Warren Fogle with a pair of goals. Oilers will aim for win 13 in a row tomorrow night when they're down in Calgary to take on the Flames. Flames had their four-game win streak snapped last night, falling 4-3 to the Leafs. Austin Matthews, was his name Big Poppy? That's correct. With the hat trick and the win, Preds topping the Kings 2-1. LA have lost 10 of its last 11. 
Vegas over the Rangers 5-1 as the Golden Knights have won 3 of 4 and the Canucks taming the Coyotes 2-1. Vancouver become the first club to reach the 30-win mark on the season. Off night in the AJHL, four games around the league tonight, including the Sherwood Park Crusaders at home to Camrose. On the hard court, the Raptors losing to the Bulls 116-110. Eight games around the NBA later tonight. Raps are back in action tomorrow night when they visit the Knicks. Oil Kings hit the ice tonight. They'll welcome in the Prince Albert Raiders to Rogers Place. Puck drop at 7. U of A Golden Bears and Pandas Basketball. They're on the road visiting Fraser Valley this weekend for a pair of games. And you can join the entire Edmonton Sports Talk crew. Super Bowl 58 will be at the Centric Casino Sports Bar and Lounge at Centric Casino Fort Road February 11th. Menu items under $10, drink specials, and your chance at prizing throughout the day. This sports update brought to you by Universal Rewind, reminding you that regular motor maintenance will prevent costly downtime. Contact them today. Learn more about their motor maintenance services. Choose experience, expertise, and quality. Choose Universal Rewind. The Nielsen Show featuring Lieutenant Eric. Only on Edmonton Sports Talk. Seven oh three with the Nielsen Show. Thanks for being here for another edition of the AM Nasty. Tell your friends about Edmonton Sports Talk. Very convenient. YouTube. Tune in. EdmontonSportsTalk.com. You can listen or watch. You can listen on your way into work today, static free. And of course, you can watch all day long. We've got coverage all the way up until one o'clock this afternoon talking about the Edmonton Oilers being on an all-time heater for this organization. I want to get to a text message that came in a little bit earlier. Lots of fun text messages rolling in today, obviously. Um, the Oilers are hotter than blank. Uh, get creative, win a gift certificate to A and W. But I want I want to get to this. And we're going to continue to break down the game, obviously. If you miss Mike Johnson and you're on YouTube, just scroll back. We had him around 6.20 today for Pro-Am Sports. If you're listening on TuneIn, uh, you can just download the podcast when it's available later on. Everything that we do here ends up as a podcast as well. But I, I love I love this. This text comes in from Strummy today. This is a great story from the game last night. Bumblebee Tuna Boys took my boy to the Kraken game last night for his ninth birthday. He's a big ebbs guy. As soon as we walk into the barn, he's getting gears from Oilers fans and fist bumps from Seattle fans. He's having a blast. We sit down, and he wants the aisle seat. An Oilers fan from a few rows below, below us goes by and starts beaking him, and they keep going back and forth every time he goes by. Some guy drops a beer on the steps just above him, and it covers his Kraken jersey. His nemesis walks by, so this is the guy he's been chirping with, mm. his nemesis walks by and we tell him what happened. He comes back a few minutes later and gives Dylan a brand new dry sidle jersey. My boy gets emotional as an, and the arch enemy says, I'm sorry they don't sell Kraken ones. And my boy says, no, I love it. I've just never met someone so nice and my boy stands up and gives him a hug. He was still feeling it on the drive home. He says to me, I'll never forget what that guy did for me, Dad. It was an amazing interaction. His name was Sheldon, and I'm hoping he's a listener. That's in from Strummy. I'm going to give a conch Man. to Strummy and his boy and Sheldon for stepping up after having some fun along the way. That's just an awesome story, man. I love hearing things like this. <laughs> right, you're having some fun, chirping the kid, then somebody else spills beer on his jersey by accident. And this guy just randomly, you know how much a new dry settle jersey is at the game? Well, Strummy says, 320 bucks. This isn't like paying it forward in the old drive-thru in the morning with a coffee. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, now here Strummy, I think I'm a big guy. <laughs> next game, Strummy has wow. to buy a $300 jersey for somebody well, else. Oh, really? Hey, <clears throat> what a... But no, I just, I mean, that just... I, well, you don't dish up your heart, you know? Post 6 o'clock just here Yeah, there. that I mean, was a special a, That yeah. was a special one, man. I think we can, I think we can make that happen. Absolute. Uh, so very, very cool story. And, and Rick is right. I mean that conch is usually locked, locked away hey, after six o'clock. You don't, but. you don't normally do. That. And for all, I mean, if you're a Sheldon this morning, give yourself yeah. a pat on the back, I guess. Sheldon. If you are a listener, I mean, and uh, he might be. Yeah. I mean, yeah. cool move, buddy. Yeah, hey, that's uh, that's pretty. We awesome. always say the names when somebody loses at trivia. So now that Sheldon's done, I think all Sheldons can kind of take a bit of a victory lap this morning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why you know, not? Even if you're not the Sheldon. 
Own it today. Yeah. Own it today. Pretend you are that Sheldon. Use that Sheldon energy in your life. Use that Sheldon to motivate you to be a better Sheldon in your life. Pat Maroon's bib says, still good people out there. Look for them. Oh, tons. They do exist. We just love the bad stories more, don't we? That's S- just it. <laughs> Surveyor Brett is in and says, touching moment of the year for the Estes. Get him an SD. <laughs> <laughs> the Estes are already getting some. They're getting some life, man. Tube Socks last night was DMing him. He goes, I'm looking. I know Maddie's already looking into this too, but, but Tube Socks is like, he goes, I'm looking online at like affordable 3D printed conch trophies. I was just like, yeah, it's not, it's not a bad idea. Like, it's like that. If we could turn the image that Tube Socks designed into the actual trophy itself for the Estes, that'd be pretty clutch. Yeah, that'd be amazing. That'd be like, I'm, right now, I'm thinking of just like right now, it'd just be like en- engraved on the engraved. trophy. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. will be engraved that'd on the trophy. True. But if we could actually give out yeah. little conch trophies, man, I kind of like it if they were random sports, like a bowling one, <laughs> just a bunch, a bunch of different things, like. Or or all of the trophies are just randomly bought from value villages across the city. All year we just go in and just buy whatever trophies we can. Various trophies. Doug that, Giants. That's probably the best. We label yeah. make uh, the award on it. <laughs> Leave the original on. <laughs> that's actually, that's not a, if we can't get the conch thing, the v- random trophies from value village might not be a bad, bad backup plan. Actually, I have an mean. idea for that at least. For if we go if we go random value village uh, trophies, I have some ideas for that. There's some really great ones that you can find out there. Tom Green used to track people down. He'd buy them at the. Uh, <laughs> to really? Try to find the person you Tom. you won in 1985. Yeah, Tom. Uh, <laughs> Tom Green. I uh, I love it. This one's in. It says, "I'm sure Sheldon must be a listener, because that sounds like something one of your listeners would do." We have a handful yeah. of Sheldons. Yeah, we do have a bunch of I Sheldons like, who uh, yeah. who've uh, chimed in. In the past, the Edmonton Oilers have won 12 in a row. Don't make the death. <laughs> we can't have Tommy wake up today and be like, boys, the desk is a mess. Ripping his hair like, that's the last thing. That's the last thing old Tommy Gazzola needs uh, this morning. Okay, so as you watch the Oilers now, like the conversation, the conversation for the mighty oil. Actually, you know, before we get into this, because I don't want to forget again. Zach Hyman with basically a tap in. What a play by Connor McDavid. I mean, dry so with a quick, but Connor's just so damn. So it was just whoop over to Hyman, back of the net. And you know where Hyman was parked? Right in his scoring zone. Hey everyone, I'm Zach Hyman of the Edmonton Oilers. She's so tenacious. I hope you guys enjoy it. Revving up his engine, listen to the crowd just roar. No reason for tension, Zach is gonna shoot and score. Hyman's in the scoring zone. Right into the scoring zone. Signed for seven years, now he's playing by McDavid's side He's got you jumping out of your seat Cause of that look in his eyes Hyman's in the scoring zone He'll take you right into that scoring zone You know he's gonna score a few Playing with Connor, it's a top line overload You'll finally see what he can do So raise your hands up as high as they can go We always said that was the magician's secret He always said that was a magician's secret. <laughs> I swear. And his energy is contagious. Playing with an edge, that's what you're gonna see. Taking the next step, cause he's no longer with the leaves. Hyman's in the scoring zone. He'll take you right in. Into that scoring zone, I'm in 
Oh, man. Hyman has been locked into a scoring zone all season long. He's got to lock him into that all-star zone now, hey? All season. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Zach Hyman doesn't need your stupid little all-star game. I hope he, like... Zach Hyman's a winner. He, That's what he, he is. Didn't, like, no thank you. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. Just, all I decline. Voting. Yeah, you know what? Zach you can Hyman, have your all-star game. Imagine, <laughs> imagine the buzz and the love people would have if Zach Hyman says, and these are the exact words, thank you for the invite to the all-star game. Yeah. He didn't get one. We're just playing this game. Yeah. Um, thank you for the invite to the all-star game. But I want to spend the time focusing on winning the Edmonton Oilers a Stanley Cup. Yeah. You know what? That that's uh that's Vince McMahon. Oh, like that's that gift for Oilers fans. Like you're just absolutely losing your mind. Okay, some good text messages rolling in. The Oilers are hotter than Renee's underboob after smuggling cigarettes across the border in her 18-wheeler. I swear, there's nothing there. Those things don't even light anymore. That's all me. Strummy on Twitter, Oilers are hotter than Ace Ventura in a mechanical rhinoceros with a busted <laughs> fan, and he's got picture attached. Got kind of <laughs> got kind of hot in that 12-game winning streak. It's kind of hot in there for Rhino. The, the Rhino bit... The rhino bit was one of the funniest, stupidest things I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. Like when they're like, Ahead of Mommy, time. look, it's having a baby. And Ace Ventura comes rolling out of there. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Ken Russell's in and says, Hey, guys, a bit of info to share. If you're looking for something to do this weekend, there's some women's ARC7 Rugby Sevens action at the Footfield Dome this weekend. All right. There you go. Check out some Rugby Sevens at uh, Footfield. This weekend, if you're looking for something to uh, to do right now. The Oilers are hotter than blank. Here's the question now with the Edmonton Oilers. Here's the conversation that we have now with the Edmonton Oilers. And your Cool Bet Hotline of the Day coming up. We're coming at you from the Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen Studios right here on Edmonton Sports Talk. They, so, when they were struggling, it's like, Okay, do you fire a coach? You make this change, you do that change. So, so they've checked off these boxes. Okay, well, now with the head coach, the new head coach, can they kind of get it together? Yes, check, check, check. They've checked off those boxes. This 12-game winning streak, after, three games after an eight-game winning streak, they've won 20-23. I mean, it's ridiculous. Can they go on an all-time heater? Check, check, check. Um, now you're looking at the next box that's checked. Can they get into a wild-card spot? Check, done that. Can they get back into the top three? Yes, they've caught the Kings. Yep. Um, they look like they'll be able to catch the Golden Knights if they keep even playing remotely hot. Well, Golden Knights getting banged up too. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, the that Golden Knights are rolling out a roster that's like sixty yeah. percent, uh, which you know that's karma, I guess, yeah. for some of the ways teams have manipulated their rosters over the last little while. But now you look at what the next questions are for the others, and I think we've got to the point where can the Oilers win it all? And what needs to be done to get there? And what questions do they have? So, I mean, we kind of checked off the box here. Stuart Skinner, behind this team, playing the way they are. And Skinner will not ever, he won't, he won't win over everybody ever. I saw, like, one guy last night on Twitter was just like, are they running Skinner ragged? Because there was two pretty stoppable goals last night. And I was like, Come on, man. It was two break it was two breakaways. It's a breakaway. Would you like to see him start? Yeah. But he's been he's been automatic. He's 16 and 2 in his last 18 games. So do you have good enough goaltending to win the Stanley Cup? And the answer would be yes if the team continues to play sound defensive hockey. I think it's good enough at this point. You're right. And yeah. we've seen other lesser than goalies go on and Bingo. do the deed in the in, in the past, not so recent past as well. Antti Niemi was a goaltender that yeah. won a Stanley Cup. Corey Crawford was never viewed as a top goaltender in the National Hockey League, but he was behind an amazing team in Chicago and was more than good enough to get the job done there. Like, these guys... Along the way, Skinner Skinner fits this bill. Like, if the team plays well in front of him, you can win a Stanley yeah. Cup with Stuart Skinner. You're still not slotting him in that upper echelon. Yeah. But we, as we've said, there are only a handful of guys around the league that are that. And it does make it easier, I guess you could argue. But it's not a guarantee in itself. But you're right. As long as everything else is going good, I think Skinner is is capable. 
yeah, like, are you viewing Stuart Skinner right now? And you can text us 780-218-9999 or in the, uh, the nasty chat this morning as well. Are you viewing Stuart Skinner right now as, even if the Oilers continue to play well defensively, he could still cost them a chance to win it? And I just don't see it that way right now. The Oilers have locked things down as a team defensively, and Stuart Skinner is reaping the benefits of that, and his game has come a long way. So there's that. Can you win a Stanley Cup with the Oilers' top four D-men as currently constructed? At Coleman Nurse, yes, yes. Bouchard, yes. He's having a huge offensive season. Can Cody CC continue to be there? I saw somebody today said, would you trade Kulak in a second for Marc-Andre Fleury? What are you talking about? Um, like, you can't trade Kulak right now. You're, you're some, some people are asking for more depth on the blue line. Why would you trade one of your best depth pieces on the blue line? And a playoff demon. Yeah. CC's interesting because, you know, he's not Nurse. He's not Echo. He's not Bouchard. He's Cody CC. But, and I brought it up yesterday with uh, YouTube Trev. Like, how many times, and maybe it was on Oil Stream too with Tommy on uh, Wednesday, how many times in the postgame show this year, and many of you are on the postgame show, you're listening, you're watching, whatever, how many times in the postgame show or how many times the morning after a game have we come in here and been like, man, Cody Cece let them down last night? How many times has that happened? It hasn't really. Like, Cody Cece has been relatively steady for most of this season. So your thoughts on the blue line? And is that championship caliber? And the way things are going right now with the results and the goals against, much like the goaltending, you could say it is. I think people could. Does it last, though? Like, and Well, again, they need to I mean, you got to say, they've been so healthy. They've lost yeah, three man yeah, games yeah, on the yeah. blue line all season. We're halfway that's through the year. Huge, like, they basically yeah. haven't had any injuries on the blue line. So that's been big. Their depth would take a hit. Like, if CC goes down, if CC goes down... Well, I mean, I think you like DeHarnay with Kulitz, and what are you doing? You know, so it would be nice to get a, a veteran defenseman in there. And then up front, it's interesting up front, because at times I view the bottom six as like, mm, maybe good enough. But I still worry about them going up against some of these teams that have better third lines. Because McLeod and Ryan and Yanmark look good at times. But I just know when, I don't know when push comes to shove in the postseason against a bigger third line that uh, that they could be effective enough. Now I don't know if it would be enough to hurt them though. Like enter Corey Perry. Their top six is so good. Nah, I mean Corey Perry to me just provides like that prick in your lineup. Like I don't think he's going to have a significant impact from a if if they were to get him from a, like a hockey perspective. No. It's like a leader and a guy who can get out of the other team's skin. But, but I, I don't. I don't think like Corey Perry's going out there and dictating shifts at this. No, stage, but the right? but the prick point of view and everything. Yeah. I mean, that's that's. I have some time for that. Adding a bit of that to the bottom six, I really do. Okay, and then on top of that, I think this is an interesting one. When we had Rashad on Monday, he talked about you know trying to find another top six forward. Which, in a perfect world, you could financially. I think it's impossible. If they do, master class from from. 2J and, and Ken Holland. But can Warren Fogle just be that sixth guy in the top six? Contract year? He gets a ton, he gets a ton of chances. Yeah, and I'm not saying like, oh man, Fogle's been so great. Give him three, four more oh, no, years. No, no, That's no, not no, what we're yeah, saying but, here. But he's playing. But yeah, you know, he's... he but he gets a ton of chances. If he can even remotely bury half of them, you know, he's gonna put together but he 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 works extremely hard. He's not your prototypical top six guy but can he moonlight as one in the in the postseason and then you add a another player that you could view as a third liner yeah. that would help your team there yeah i don't i think like, fogel works hard he's been very consistent the entire season like when they were struggling one of the things that we kept talking about was you know like fogel's actually playing pretty well and that's probably why he gets this opportunity that he does right now in the uh, in the top six, but a McLeod Kane thing too on the other side too. You get you know there, there's there's an options to kind of move things around and, and knob lock and twist the levers and push the buttons or whatever. I, I to answer your question, yes, he could. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine.
Guys, doesn't Skinner have like a 930 save percentage since they stopped sucking? What else does he need to do? If you're expecting him to stop everything, then what are we doing here? Yeah, that's why I said that guy last night who was like, ah, man, would like to see him stop those two point blank breakaway goals that were absolute snipes. I mean, what are you supposed to do on that? If if Connor McDavid or Leon Dreisettel score those goals in that fashion, nobody's nobody's complaining about the other team's goaltender. Come on. Skinner, safe, Skinner safe was excellent say, last night. There's a percentile out there in that until he wins the Vesna, Conn Smythe, and Stanley Cup that the jury will still be out, right? There are people. A handful. A small handful, maybe. Skurbs is in in the nasty chat and says, Someone asked me at the Leafs game if I ever noticed CeCe. And I said, I never do. And that's a good thing to me. Right? Like, you have enough defensemen that are noticeable for you. Like, you want to notice Evan Bouchard because that means he's going to put up 65 or 70 points this year. You want to notice Darnell Nurse because you're paying him a bunch. And when he's on, he looks really good. And, of course, you want to notice Matias Ekholm because he's an absolute game changer for you as well. But you don't need to notice Cody Cece. Like, if Cody Cece scores a couple of goals in the second half of the season, that's a bonus. But every single game that the Oilers have and nobody's talking about Cody Cece is an absolute dub for the Edmonton Oilers and Cody Cece. Dean is in and says, if you give up on Broberg now, you will not believe how much you're going to regret it. I don't know, Dino. I, I also don't know, like, what, what does Broberg get you that helps you now? That's the only thing that matters, right? The only thing that matters, if you were going to trade Philip Broberg, it had to be for something that helped you win the Stanley Cup this season. End of story. So I just don't, I don't know if there, there's a team out there that's, that's going to, uh, what, are you going to trade Broberg for a third line Third line center. I mean, a real good one. Put him in a trade for like Boone Jenner or something. The Bukestad Kessel ring. Bring him home. Bring him all home. God, if you, if you could have just found a way, like that, that ticks a lot of boxes yeah. here and a lot of questions. We've been kind Bukestad of humming over would here. be such a good fit. And Kessel ring's been playing, right having now. a pretty tidy season as well. And you, you talk about just adding a little bit of defensive yeah. depth right there. I mean, it didn't look like I, he again, was ever going to. Get a crack here, right? I so know, good for him. That's he was the typical fresh start somewhere else guy. Same with what's his really face. Uh, started with an R. Went to Pittsburgh there. Uh, Marino. Marino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Started with an M. Had an R in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna... Same type of thing. Uh, all right, let's get into your cool bet hotline of the day. I think Mr. Lean has just been working on things over there. I've seen that one arm moving around, searching for things to bet on. You hit on uh, on Wednesday Felix, on the lean. Felix, mm -hmm. yeah, are mm -hmm. you going back to tennis again, buddy? You know it. Oh, man, Absolutely. look at this guy. Absolutely. Later tonight, uh, 1 o'clock in this mor uh, the morning, uh, our boy Felix Ojealiasim takes to the court at the Aussie Open against three-seeded Medvedev, so it's not going to be easy. Mm. Um I'm not like, look, I'm going to root for the Canadian. I'm going to hope that the Canadian moves on. But I don't think the Canadian will move on here. But in this match, this is a third-round match. In the first two matches for Medvedev, he dropped the first set. In fact, in his last match in the second round, he dropped the first two sets and then had a rally to win in like five sets. If you bet Felix Ojealiasim to win the first set, which Medvedev has lost Medvedev in the was first the two. Racket, right? was a I think I saw Medvedev like throwing. His, Is he tossing? Oh, yeah, yeah, he's a mess. That's, that's, that's very tennis. Yeah. yeah. But if Felix Ojealiasim wins the first set, which again, Medvedev has lost in his first two matches at the Aussie Open, it's plus 220. I like that number. Plus 220. For Felix Ojealiasim to win the first set. That's where I'd be looking at this one. If Felix could win this match, it would be a great win for him. It's going to be very difficult because Medvedev's a guy that he could ultimately go win this whole tournament. He is a great player. Um, but yeah, I'm, I, Medvedev seems to right now struggle in that first set and then picks it up and wins. That's a nice little number if you could get it. That's a little, little sprinkle, I think they call that. You have become the foremost leader in tennis betting in this country. I don't think that's a stretch to say. Who else is hitting 100% on tennis picks this week? Go ahead. Sub to... Submit suggestions to us. How many other people have hit on 100% of their tennis picks this week? Start calling him an ace. Mr. Lean has. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Lean has for sure. So uh, Let's go Felix. Yeah. Hopefully he could get the win, though. It'd be great. Just, yeah. For... You're unselfish here. You just want to. I'm not crazy enough to think that he's going to absolutely That's get the win. Mean, but yeah. as a Canadian, absolutely, I hope he actually. Hey, three set. Do it in three. 
Not it's for a bet or anything, but as a no, fan, no, yeah. straight up. Thanks, Let's do a few. Let's, Let's, Let's do it. Let's have one. Let's have I would one. love one day for him to yeah. win a major. You know, it'd be such a nice story. George Delgado says, my iPad crashed this morning. I'm watching EST on my 75-inch TV this morning. What? Hey, hey, that's up. crazy. Why isn't it always on the 75-inch yeah, TV? that's a good point, actually. Mike Johnson's hands on those. Yeah, hey, like, uh, he's just uh, really, really, really. Uh, that would be insane. Uh, all right, I want to do this. How about this for our Cool Bet Hotline? What he needs today? to do is put it on the 75-inch TV and then have the comments going on his iPad. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, nice TV. Uh, here's what I want to do for yeah, the Cool Bet Hotline of the day today. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just <laughs> uh, why, why are you watching on your 100-inch oh, TV? Yeah, yeah. Um, where do you guys come out on this? We're all here together today. NFL this weekend. Ravens, Lions, Bills. Plus 177. For all three of them, just to win money line. Oh, so you want to go like just money line? Our three, our three yeah. teams have to win. That's the EST parlay from today. That's our cool bet hotline. I, I'm of the feeling day. great. I hate I having my be, team bet on. <laughs> well, yeah, but go for it. It's yeah, your it's hot. You. It's, it's not mine. It's your hotline of the day. Yeah, but the, I mean, if, if the Ravens one. blow it for us, I'm going to be pissed. Sure, because they're minus four fifty five. Pissed at Maddie. You don't honestly think the Ravens are going to lose to the Texans, do you? You want to know something? I, the entire time as the Ravens were trying to lock up the number one seed and we went into last weekend, I was like, as long as the Dolphins don't beat the Chiefs, Ravens are either going to get the Browns, the Texans, or the Feeling Steelers. That, That's right? awesome. Yeah. Watched that game. Watched what Stroud did to the Browns' defense. He is a stud muffin. Lamar still hasn't fully proven in the playoffs. That team with Lamar has been a great regular season team. Haven't got it done always in the playoffs. So there, there is a little bit of me that goes, I could see the Ravens getting off to a slow start and then the Texans finishing them off. Winter, so, winter Storm I'm Baltimore worried. today. But then tomorrow minus three makes the sun and cloud. Get that Wait, it's supposed to be windy. Then I'm always way. nervous with my I, team. I, I, I don't like, think I like I'm ever not you got nervous with nest. my You got them in Baltimore, you're... Black yeah. jerseys. I don't think I've ever been confident in the Ravens in my entire life, and I've watched them <laughs> win two Super Bowls. Just shut up with your Super Bowl confidence stuff. Unbelievable. Uh, Ravens, Lions, and Bills, if you want to ride with the show this morning, if you parlay them all, it's plus 177. And uh, Jake, I don't know if you're watching, anybody from Cool Bet's watching, but if you want to put those together in a little EST NFL parlay, I know it's a little chalky. Uh, but take a little boost and throw it up in the exclusives. We'll certainly do that as well. So that's the hotline of the day? Yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's it. For the weekend, right? We used to do that with, like, uh, Golden Bears and stuff. Golden Bears, Oilers, Elks in the, uh, in the you know? Did you know who did never blew it? It was the Oilers at the time. And the Elks did it once. The Golden Bears yeah, Golden always Bears delivered. produced for our ESD parlors. If there's one us. person who delivers in this city, it's Chris Morse. All right, let's get to a sports update for Park Mazda. Dave Naylor on the other side will continue this NFL discussion. And uh, we'll get his thoughts on some of the CFL movement here recently around the league as well, including Rhymes going to Ottawa. Scooped up quickly on a two-year deal after uh, letting it be known that he was not going to sign with the BC Lions. So we'll get into that, but let's get to a sports update for Park Mazda. Song's still playing here. Darnell Nurse song was just rolling on the playlist. Here we go. Edmonton Oilers 4-2 over the Kraken for the club's 12th straight win. Leon Dry settled four-point evening. Warren Fogle, a pair of goals. Oilers now third in the Pacific. They're a point up on the Kings with a game in hand. As the club aim for its 13th straight win tomorrow night down in Calgary. Flames had their four-game win streak snapped last night, following the Leafs 4-3. Austin Matthews with the hat trick. Preds over the Kings 2-1. Vegas over the Rangers 5-1. And the Canucks picking up their 30th win of the campaign 2-1 over Arizona. Four games around the AJHL later this evening, including the Sherwood Park Crusaders. They're at home to Camrose. Raptors falling to the Bulls, 116-110 in NBA action. Eight games around the association tonight. The Raps are back on the court tomorrow night when they visit the Knicks. Oil Kings hit the ice tonight. They'll welcome in the Prince Albert Raiders to Rogers Place. Puck drop at 7. Golden Bears and Pandas basketball, they're on the road. They're visiting Fraser Valley for a pair of games beginning tonight. And you can join the entire Edmonton Sports Talk crew. Super Bowl 58 will be at the Century Casino Sports Bar and Lounge, Century Casino Fort Road, for the big game February 11th. Menu items under 10 bucks, drink specials, and your chance at prizing throughout the day. Sports update brought to you by the great staff at Park Mazda and Mitch Lewicki, where he's already booked a room at the Century Casino Sports Bar and Lounge <laughs> for Super Bowl 58. Hi there.
If you're like me, you like to picture yourself in luxury, even though there's absolutely no way you could afford it. And if you can, well, even better. Thankfully, I picture myself in something that is luxury, but still absolutely affordable, like the all-new Mazda CX-90 from Park Mazda. With the new luxury features like facial recognition settings and quilted detail Napa leather seating, I can pretend to be comfortable with all of my proper settings activated without even touching a button, thanks to Mitch Lewicki and the great staff of Park Mazda. I like to picture Mitch Lewicki with like a giant eagle's wings and singing lead vocals for Leonard Skinner with like an angel band. And I'm in the crowd hammer drunk. Park Mazda, your dealer for life in Sherwood Park off Y Road, Park Mazda dossier. I've got something under my skin, and the itch won't go away. It's my original sin. The poison that I Brave. Come along for the ride, I'd make you feel better Cut the rope that I tied, but then I broke my skin again You got me fiending for that first high But the feeling's not the same me stealing, killing, I die Just to feel your emotion Veins the doc in the nasty chat says, I need to know why Dusty always opens up the door during this break. Ah. Ah, well, you're new here. Uh, <laughs> our running bit is the band Whale and the Wolf, who are our EST house band, are in the closet and they can only play when we open the door. That's the, that's the little bit. And uh, they're in there. They've been in there for months now. And uh, Well, actually, they just left nice place. on the way to Regina right now as we speak. Oh, yeah, uh, they, sorry. They got, what, Regina, Saskatoon fans, this weekend. Uh, Saskatchewan side tonight at the Exchange down in Regina and tomorrow night at Amigos, the legendary Amigos in Saskatchewan. And they're going to be hitting up some A&W on the way. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. big A&W band. I love it. Will and the Wolf powered by A&W. Yeah, yeah. Luke got back. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Did his car start at the it airport? Started. No way. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, yeah. How did that car start? It was at the airport. No it was clue. minus 50 for like four days. For a week? the hell i don't know but now the heater doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> so, well that's a weird you can't, you can't get it all, uh, away, all uh. right uh dave naylor is joining us he's probably at the border i would think naylor where are you at right now what's going on i'm i'm staying clear of western new york this week because <laughs> i <laughs> I, no, I got out on Monday night and i had to tell our bosses at tsn no hotel for Monday night in Buffalo for me because if I don't get out after that game, it's 7 a.m. Tuesday. Another one of these is rolling in. And Wednesday, there's another one rolling in. And Thursday, there's another one rolling in. <laughs> Jeez. No, this is like the 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 storm videos all week have been epic uh, in Western New York. Now, it's clear today, and I believe it's going to be clear right through to Sunday. Okay. So, but like there are towns just south of Buffalo that have had like, a hundred inches, you know, this year, Jeez. 74 in the last week. Like, it is unreal, even by the standards of Western Europe. How many? Like, there was, yes, there's a Twitter account I'm, I'm following called Buffalo Weather or so, at Weather Buffalo. And the guy who runs it described the conditions the other day as insane. When the Buffalo Weather account is using the word insane. <laughs> Did you shovel a couple of rows yourself there at uh, at the stadium? I'm going to congratulate you because you are the 100th. The number of texts <laughs> I got from friends, family, Twitter followers, Facebook friends, and you asking me if I shoveled on the weekend. No, I didn't shovel. If I was 36 and not 56, I would shovel. But I didn't. <laughs> uh, are you still drinking that coffee from last week? No, actually, we uh, we ended that coffee cup's life at a gas station in like St. Catharines. Ah, at home or something. all right. Ceremony. Okay. Yeah, toss that one out. Yeah. On the way back. Out. On the way back, though, from the game. Across the border again. Across the border again. <laughs> <Across> the border. <laughs> Although the third time, I think empty, you know. So, anyway. Uh, Dave Naylor is with us here. We are going to get to some CFL, obviously, with some more movement around the league, yeah. but we're already on the, the, the scene here in the National Football League. Uh, Buffalo Bills, obviously, a pretty nice win last week against the Steelers. The Chiefs looked great, kind of got their offense going a little bit more so than in the regular season, I think, at times in that game. What's your feel? What's your vibe for the Chiefs and Bills this weekend? You know, the, the Bills have had a lot of success against the Chiefs. I mean, they've won at Kansas City in each of the past two regular season games. But there's some wild cards in this one, right? Uh, they had – Buffalo had five starters who were on defense who started the Miami game 
in week 18 that did not finish the Pittsburgh game. I mean, that's half your defense. Ooh, that's field. big. Yeah, it is. And they're likely going to get a couple of those guys back, but they're also going to be missing a few. And when you're talking about missing corners, safeties, linebackers against Patrick Mahomes, you know, that that can be highly detrimental. They, they are – they're very – solid up front on the defensive line. They're going to have to get some pressure and get some sacks and keep Mahomes contained because they're going to have to help out the back end. Just back end is not going to be what we're used to seeing. And I think the, the, the you know, it's hard to isolate on one guy, me more important than the other, but Terrell Bernard, who's been their tremendous middle linebacker this year, a real playmaker. He went out with looked like a serious knee injury. Now, Sean McDermott has said there's hope for him this week. You wouldn't have thought so the way he left the field last week, but he may be, yeah, you know, him or Taron Johnson, their slot corner, is certainly the most important of those. Offensively, they're healthy. Gabe Davis may not play, but beyond that, I mean, this team has had the same offensive line every game all season. Josh Allen is healthy. The receivers are healthy. So, you know, they may have to put up more than 20 points, which is what they put up when they won at Kansas City. They won 20 to 17. The other factor from Kansas City is they didn't see Isaiah Pacheco in that game. And, you know, he's got a hard-running physical style that really is useful at this time of year. He's a yards-after-contact guy, had 24 carries in that Miami game. So you can see, you know, the way they use him. He didn't play in that game, so that's another factor here. And ultimately, everyone's going to look at Mahomes, you know, versus Allen, and these are two very similar quarterbacks in that they can do things. I mean, Josh is more of a, a threat to just take off down the field. But in terms of mobility and throwing on the run and moving around behind the line of scrimmage, they're very similar. Uh, they've met a ton of times. Uh, it, you know, this is the Bills twice, right? Their Super Bowl dreams have ended at, at Kansas City. The whole goal yeah. has been to get them back in Buffalo, where Patrick Mahomes has never played a road playoff game. Like he's 0 and 0 in road playoff games. You know, the only place he's ever played a playoff game away from Arrowhead is the Super Bowl. So the Bills got him where they want him. It's going to be cold, but I mean, like. That's Kansas City. It's not going to be as cold as it was in Kansas City. Last. I think that <laughs> yeah. kickoff, yeah, kickoff times like minus fourteen Celsius or something, right? But that's not as bad as it was a week before. So I don't think the cold's any advantage, but the crowd certainly will be. Uh, just shifting up to uh, Canadian Bowl here, Dave, and uh, yesterday a few moves. I'll start with uh, Brown to Ottawa, and if you could, uh, I know the CFL account had the little action up on Twitter. Uh, Log jam was one of my favorites, but describe that Red Blacks quarterback room right now and how do you see kind of that depth chart all settling out? Well, I think when the contract comes in for Drew Brown, it will reflect the fact that he's their number one quarterback. Okay. And I will be, you know, shocked if he's not taking the first snap of the season. Uh, I think Dustin Crum probably slots in as their number two, you know, in his second CFL season, you know, started what 12 games last year or more, which is very unusual for a rookie. That was mostly injury driven, but I think they're comfortable opening the season with him as number two. And then they've got Jeremiah Mazzoli and Tyree Adams, both of whom are coming back from serious injuries. And I think they're not sure whether either of them is going to be ready for the start of the season or how the timing on that is going to work. But eventually I think Jeremiah Mazzoli you know, has a chance to play his way onto the depth chart and maybe onto the field. And you could even see a, you remember when Ottawa won the great cup that year, Trevor Harris was the guy and then he stumbled and struggled and they brought in Henry Burris and Henry ended up taking over and took yep. him to the great cup. And then it was Harris, Trevor's team after that. I, I think you could see that. I mean, if Drew Brown, you know, struggles or gets hurt, would it shock me if Jeremiah Mazzoli is the starting quarterback for the Ottawa Red Blacks in October? No, I, it wouldn't. And it's a it's a real low risk proposition for Ottawa because Mazzoli has one of these bonuses and you can't walk away from those if a player's injured. So they had to play pay the hundred thousand dollar bonus no matter what. Their full commitment to him is like one hundred and thirty thousand base with no play time. So they're basically getting Jeremiah Mazzoli for thirty thousand dollars. If they cut him, they'd have to go sign somebody else for seventy five. So, you know, it's it's an absolute kind of, you know, house money signing for, for them to keep Mazzoli on a restructured contract. Uh, Brown is their guy. You know, you look at the rest of the market, it's really hard to make, <laughs> make an argument that there's another guy with a resume that says he could be a starting quarterback on the market right now, unless you're, you know, I don't, you guys are in Edmonton. I don't think you'd, you'd appreciate a team rolling the dice with Taylor Cornelius. Um, and then the other one, the only other one would be Matthew Schiltz, who, you know, skill wise might have the ability to be a starting quarterback in the CFL, but what's his record for the longest number of games he yeah. stayed healthy. And I, and I just think, especially given Ottawa, 
Like, what's the what's the narrative in Ottawa for the last several seasons, right? Matt Nichols, bang, hurt. Jeremiah Mazzoli, bang, hurt, bang, hurt. Like, it's it's injured quarterbacks. And you just couldn't bring in a guy who's got a resume that says, you know, he's going to be dicey to get through a season. Naylor, before we let you go, pretty significant deal in the Canadian Football League with Serezna going to the Argos, Gittins Jr., who we're going to have on the show in about an hour uh, for the first time, coming the other way. You know, the Elks are very strong at receiver once again, and mixing a legitimate Canadian threat this year, which which helps. We were surprised that they moved on from Serezna, but your thoughts on this deal on both sides, and I guess how we might have to wait to judge it to see what the Elks do in free agency on that defensive line. No question. I mean, look, on the surface, you know, just to dumb this down as much as you can, when you see a really good Canadian traded straight up for a really good American, you usually say advantage the team that got the Canadian, right? Because it's easier to backfill a Jake Ceresna than it is a Curly Gittins. Now, Ceresna is a special player, and I think part of the reason maybe he doesn't have that recognition around the league among fans in general is just because he's played on a team that hasn't you know, been playing in the playoffs for a few years. And, of course, he's bounced back and forth to the NFL a couple times and that getting attention there as well. The Argos are, were really deep on D-line last year. I think this suggests that they think they're not going to be able to keep a number of those players so that this is a backfill for them. And Gittins is just a guy who you know, signed a contract off – a significant season in 2022 and then had injuries in 2023, never really got on track. I, I assume there was probably some effort to restructure his contract. And of course, if he didn't want to do that, then he would be a free agent. So the Argos figure, well, why don't we trade him rather than have him walk when we try to renegotiate his contract and Edmonton's willing to take the contract. I don't know if they're, if they're trying to restructure on their end or not. Sometimes that happens. You trade a guy and then they try to restructure when you get there. Because uh, he is coming off a down year. But, I mean, he had a huge year. And who was the quarterback with whom he had the chemistry yeah. who fed him those balls down the field? It was McLeod Bethel Thompson. And I'm I'm sure that's part of Edmonton's thinking here. But it was basically, you know, Toronto's got some cap trouble. They they And, they again, they've had a couple Canadian receivers break through, like Tommy Neal a little bit last year or Shea Brissett. So they got some depth at that position. And, uh, you know, while you wouldn't think of – D-line is an area where the Argos are in need after free agents at me, maybe. But, you know, look, just for Edmonton fans, you're getting a great player in Curly Gittins. I mean, this is a guy right from high school, university years. Uh, do a Google on a on a piece that Steve Simmons wrote about him at the end of the 2022 season, which is really good. Steve Simmons, the Toronto Sun. If you want to learn a little more about Curly Gittins Jr., Google that piece. It's still out there in cyberspace, and it's a really nice look at, at a, a really, really good football player that Edmonton's getting. As always, Naylor, we appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you, man. Take care. There you See go. Ya. That's Dave Naylor. Does a great job covering both leagues for TSN. Also, a huge shout out to Naylor for getting a cyberspace term mixed in there. I haven't heard cyberspace in a long time. I love it. It's out there in cyberspace. I think that's great. That's a Y2K. Eh? Uh, Gittins Jr. Let's talk about this for a second, boys. How much value does he have in a CFL fantasy league being reunited with MBT? It was a thousand yards two years ago. Well, that's huge. I, I do believe I had for that leagues version. like ours that have Canadian the, the Canadian spot. I had that version on my. I believe it. Did you was, have Gittins Junior? I believe too? it was the MBT year, Mandy. I, I'm not too sure if we have the uh, official stats. Well, I could look up see if I could find. <laughs> he it. was uh, no. I mean, it was good. And, and, and he was a high draft pick last year. Yeah, in well, our league. And we do we do observe well, the last ratio. Last year he yeah. was a high draft pick yeah. like, because yeah. he had that big year. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So oh, it was one like once you find those Canadians. So I think McCord took him. He was like the. The next Brad Sinopoli, in a sense, steady ratio buster on that. The, yeah. the Canadian that that is a major major cheat code if you can make it happen. You had Trey Ford, did you not? Yeah, and you were running two QBs, got yourself pretty deep. Yeah, Oliveira too. That's Brady Oliveira was a major goes, major like Brady Oliveira. Assuming he stays in Winnipeg, you can make a case for him to be the first overall pick in our CFL fantasy drafts. It would have been between him and Trey Ford. From a cheat code ratio, Probably because of the spot, ratio, yeah. it would have been. I think in our league this year, it would have been either Trey Ford or Brady. But I think that's been decided because of Chris Jones. Which can I just quickly throw something out there? Yes, yes. The Ottawa Red Blacks need to win this year, don't they? And they're going with a young quarterback, and they're He's going. And Dave Naylor says, Mr. "Oh, Lee, they're going to give Drew Brown starting money." Where's this leap from? Crumb can be thinking uh, the same thing. Like right? it's, like he, he proved himself but they're going to give the younger guy who hasn't really proven himself. He hasn't played a full season yet. Oh, Brown hasn't played a full season yet. We don't know what he can do. But and he could just they're be going a product with of the Bombers. 
I mean, Which, like a lot of things, are going to be Brady Olivera. But too. they're taking the chance with the young guy. Yeah. But no, I got to go MBT here. Got to go. You got to take, you know, mess things up with Trey Ford. <laughs> but I thought you were going to say something about CFL fantasy. I didn't think I you were going to come back, right back around to. Uh, no, it was that. It was the moment that Dave Drew Miller Brown, said that. Drew that Brown does look good. I did. I, yeah. I, I think I've probably called almost every single snap Drew Brown has played. But what's what's Crum now oh. thinking too? Like well, he, I mean, he, that is. Yeah, if I was Crum, I'd be year. a little pissed. It's kind of that same. Like, sure, but that should it, be your like, like that's the job you, you want it, right? Yeah. But did Trey Ford look bad? No. So, but Drew Brown looks like a better passer than Trey Ford. I yeah. Also, Drew Brown had a, a Winnipeg offensive line in front of him. I know that's the well, thing. That's like the, I said, the, the could just be a like, give me those yeah, five. Put put Trey Ford behind those five guys oh, sure. and let's see what he can do. Yeah. And see if he has time to make the passes and stuff. But no, you and I can't go. wait for our expanded CFL coverage here on Edmonton Sports Talk. Hey, what can't fantasy wait? Season ramps up. I as can't well. wait. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this text is in and says, "I found you guys." I texted last night because I just couldn't help myself. Jammer the Tall is my name. I can't go with my other name, John the Band Teacher, because apparently some other guys already got that one. How many Johns are teachers in Edmonton? Well, Jammer, I guess quite a few. <laughs> I guess there's probably quite a... Like, you thought you were the yeah. only John? Now, Band Teacher, that's kind of interesting. Lots of Johns. But there's probably a lot of Johns teaching in the Edmonton School District and surrounding areas. But I like Jammer the Tall. There's lots of Johns in general. I mean, Jammer the Jammer the Tall works. It's like the Sheldon That's thing a good all over handle. again, hey? Yeah. <laughs> Is John the band teacher the guy who wants to bring in the tuba? I How did he contact us? Because I do want to talk to him. I do want to I, I, I do want to get yeah, I do yeah, want to yeah. make that happen. Did he email us? I feel like he might have emailed us. I think it was it maybe a text or a tweet. I don't oh, it might have been a DM. Might have been a might have been a DM. But I do want to get him in here on the tuba to play the A and W song with us. Because I think that would be great. Thank you very much for the text, though. Keep uh, pounding that inbox, Paris Jewelers inbox, 780-218-9999. As you get set for Valentine's Day, let our crew at PJ's look after you. ParisJewelers.com, 22 locations across the country. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a legitimate text or if they're just trolling a little bit. Mysterium, though, on the Nasty Chat says, boys, that third goal that was disallowed was the first three goals against since New York on December 22nd. Is Skinny getting tired? I don't think well, so, is man. Is there a debate I, coming up here of a Pickard starting tomorrow, or uh, we're kind of in the Nasty I mean, Chat you, right now? You are starting Stuart Skinner against the Calgary Flames in the Battle of Alberta. You have to. How, well, why would you not? Maddie made a good point. Because Columbus tired. and Chicago <laughs> next week. You can... You can go to so let's say Skinner plays Skinner plays Saturday. Yeah. Which one's first? Is Columbus in town first or is it Chicago? Who's here Tuesday? Uh, Columbus. Th it doesn't matter. Blue Jackets. You, you yeah. play you play them on Tuesday, and then Skinner gets Chicago. Sunday. Yeah, so Chicago's here. No, no it's Blue Columbus, Jackets, Chicago, Tuesday, Chicago, and then Tuesday. Nashville on the Saturday too. Columbus, Chicago, Nashville. So Skinner plays Saturday night, has Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off, and starts Thursday against the Hawks. Then play Saturday against the Preds, and then wouldn't have to play again until February yeah. 6th in Vegas. So even if Stuart Skinner plays on Saturday, which he should, he's going to play three games over like a 12-day stretch. So Stuart Skinner can play on Saturday. And then Picker gets one of those two games next week. That's probably what they're thinking. I don't. I just don't understand. I don't see. I don't see why people would try to make any case for Skinner not to play against the Calgary Flames. I feel like I'm taking bloody crazy pills here if that's happening. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine, or hit us up in the nasty chat here as well. Uh, also, want to throw this out there. How about of a round of applause for Zach Tickham's debut last night? Did a nice job. Tommy spanked his peepee, size unknown, for saying we when describing the others, but a solid start for young Zach. Oh, I, didn't, I didn't even know Zach was. I saw it on his Instagram story. Was he? Yeah. On the post game or on pregame? Uh, one of the two. He had. He was in here with Trev, and they were. Oh, did the buttons. But and they the threw him on last night. Oh, he did, yeah. Well, he, in this the big week, he made his hangout debut made as his well. Hangout debut, Zach yeah. to come. Well done. He's killing it. This guy's. Uh, this guy's fitting in well here. Very tall too. Hey. Yeah. Maddie as the evaluator of Zacticum. Where's he at right now? B plus, A minus, D, 
Yeah, B plus. B plus. B? Well, that's good. That's nice. He's B, B, B plus in that plus, range. B plus. So what happen? do you hate about him? No, you never start off right at the top. <laughs> that's good. You you can't, you're, pr- you're not rolling in here and dropping 40 in a triple double. Like, funny, that's uh, I was looking at, I can't remember where this came up, but I was, Uremchuk was one of our interns. And I had given him a great review, like, hey, great practicum and stuff. But when I did his evaluation, he didn't get like 100% or whatever. What? So I'm not, I'm not exactly just always just throwing out A pluses the entire time for everything. Really? Yeah. What, did you, what, did you, what did you give you? I'd have to go track. find that. Like, there was a couple of things, like, cause I think you rate So, what do you give them, like, a, out of, like, 100%? It was, like, it was, like, you give, there's certain categories and you market, like. Oh, I want to know where your rem track didn't get the love from you. Um, well, it would have been, like, think. if it was out of five, like, some things would have been fours. Okay. Wow. Yeah. You're a real, you, you grind, eh? Yeah, so, uh, like, so, Zach, he's, he's two weeks in. He's not going to be right at the. No, I hundred percent. Checking off a bunch of fives He's not already. B's, for this guy. B pluses, like that's that's fine. That then there's room to get into A's. Anyway, he's been a great fit around here. Every time we tell people the nickname Zacticum, they just said the two guys who were in from New York yesterday. When we're like, I say, hey Zacticum, can yeah, you yeah. close the doors? They're like, I say, he's our practicum kid. His name's Zach. They're like, Zacticum. Ah! I was just like, my God. You did very well with that because the prior interns we always had got the nickname bestowed on them by Dave Jameson. Okay. At some point in their practicum, Dave would say something like, "There, and there's your nickname," and that's how it all would yeah, start. Yeah. Dave hasn't met Zach yet, yeah, yeah, and you threw one out day one, and it's just is perfect. It's so just, well it, done it, on it, you. It ties for, together nicely. Yeah. It really does. Like, like it would not work if we called him an intern, but practicum and Zacticum works. Zach turn like that just doesn't that does doesn't it worked out well? It worked out extremely well, and he's always. He's always here very early. He's, like, he's probably on his way in right now. He'll be, uh, he'll be in for nine. Oh, nine today. Yeah. With with no vehicle. He's been rolling in like at 8.15? With no yeah, vehicle. He texted me this morning. Oh, though, okay. Saying he's not he does, driving. Like he's... That, that's an yeah, he's in the yeah, hunt he for a vehicle. Yeah, he's looking for a vehicle right yeah, yeah. now. So he's like... He's taking Ubers and cabs and getting rides. He took and the city bus the other Maddie gave him a ride home yeah. on Wednesday. We get or a ride to Nate. Yeah. There's an eight car, eh? Yeah. Nice That's season. right. Oh, I never got that. Hell of a deal. Are you kidding me? Uh, that they started that U pass, whatever they call it, at Nate after I was saved my at life. Nate. I had to pay for on the bus. bus. On the bus, like when you pay for part of your tuition is you get bus pass basically free bus. And Nate added it after I was there. Bus all around town. That that's nice. Yeah, it would have been. Well, now it is. Yeah, I took the bus. To go to my job at uh, Save on Foods when I lived in Lethbridge, I was living on the West End, and my car broke down, so I had to take a bus to work. And I didn't mind it. It was slightly inconvenient, but I didn't mind it because when I get on there, I'd imagine I was uh, Eminem and 8 Mile and do lyrics. Yeah, you and I was always just like, oh, man, up in the back, hey. sitting here in the back of a bus. Bus is great because you could get stuff done. I like the bus more than the LRT. Why? Yeah, that's the... the I don't know. The similar the romance to me. of the, 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 I, I, I don't know. the bus. I, 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 yeah, maybe the, the nostalgia. You meet a lot of cool people. Of a bus. They also the fact that our LRT scares me a little bit. I have taken the LRT, well, like last year, 2023, more than I had in years. And I it was fine. I, I enjoyed being back on the train. Yeah, but you're a badass. Nothing intimidates you. You gave your Renchuk fours on his review. You what, I'm supposed to be scared of your Renchuk? <laughs> <laughs> uh... Yeah, 780-218-9999. Jeffrey says, I had to buy my own bus pass when I went to Nate. Uh, Survey Brett says, I took the bus to Nate from the south side. Southgate to Nate on the big double bus. Stops at every stop. It was lame. <laughs> I missed my get-off point once, and this is before I oh, knew no. the city, and then I was south side somewhere and. It took a couple hours to get home. The worst part about Nate for me is I live North Edmonton, and there'd be the only bus I could take came from South Edmonton, and it was the accordion bus. And by the time it got to Nate, it was packed. Did you ever have to stand in the accordion spot? No, you couldn't get to the, like, you could only, when it got to Nate, you could only stand next to the bus driver if you got on. Yeah. yeah. So, like, you couldn't even, so I often, like, I couldn't take it home often. I just have to wait an extra while. I called my dad to pick me up on his way home from work. But it was just, like, accordion bus completely full, jam-packed, no space, and it was just a mess. 
All right, send us your public transit stories. 780-218-9999. My wife loves taking the bus. It's great. Yeah. She loves it. She I like too, yeah. I don't know if she reads a book or she puts on headphones or something. Maybe it's a new pod here. Hey, we can do a Tales public, from public the transit bus. pod. Tales from the bus. We could go live on the ETS. If the, city, if the city of Edmonton wants to reach out, we can set things up for public transit. You want to know something? We could do show how, how great it is oh, on the planet. Yeah. We could do... The good and the bad and the ugly. We could bring a show e live on the ETS once a week. I don't know. We take a trip on the ETS. What time, what time are we talking? Whenever. Yeah. Around the clock. Like not morning. Middle of the day. Yeah. Like, yeah. like you, we you guys take, know like, me. I'm, in, I'm intimidated yeah. going downtown. So so we don't. We don't the, have the, the city's the city big. Core worries me a little bit. City's right? big. We're not going downtown. Like <laughs> let's seed. let's take the bus from here to Southgate. Let's go to a Stingers game. Let's hop in the LRT and oh, away we great. go. And, right? You and I have we've had some great trips on the LRT. I've gone to Commonwealth that way a lot. Yeah, I've gone to U of A a lot yeah, this summer. Betcha. Once they make that West connection, whew, I'll be stepping out my door and it's right there. Yeah, that's not far from your place. That's gonna be great. Yeah. And then they're making those pillars really high. Those are very high pillars. It's like by you're the wall. in Vancouver. It's a big city thing. That's a big yeah, city exactly, move. Exactly right. Like I, I feel like West Edmonton, the quaint little West Edmonton around West Edmonton Mall, is being ruined by these big pillars. Well, well, it's the dumbest thing they did. Can we not get to vote on these pillars? Ah, oh, you need the pillars. You need why? Can we? This go, subway can we go underground to... with this thing. Oh, you can maybe go underground, but being street levels, it just I, well, I hate that. A bit of a headache. No, like you go to New York or something, it's above ground. It's great. Yeah. Doesn't mess with the traffic. Adam Seals in it says EST. On the ETS. <laughs> yeah, it writes itself. Uh, this text is in from Matt. He says, man, no, no. Tom Gazzola was really giving Zach to come a hard time last night when he came on camera for the first time. What? I have to go back and watch this. Why was Tommy giving a... Tommy's probably intimidated by Zach to come. Zach has got great hair, man. Well, Tommy also really hates when people say we with the Oilers. Yeah, I know. And, like, who's the one that he just went after again with a we? And I was like, well... He had Zach to come last night. Up. No, I know, but there was somebody that was, like, played or coached. I was like, well, they kind of... If you play or coach, it is weird. You could 100% use yeah. Wade for the rest I mean, of if life. it's Gager, he played for the yeah, others. Yeah, 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 no, yeah, there yeah. was someone else. I can't remember who it was exactly. But it's like, yeah, if you've, if you've suited up, yeah. enough, you've got the we for life. Enough gatekeeping here, right? Yeah, I would think so. <laughs> Morning, boys. Asked Tommy last night, but after listening to Knobloch's postgame last night, sounds like there might be an issue with Kane. Thoughts? Well, I don't think sounds like. I think it's pretty clear that there's an issue with Kane. Did we not know this before last night, though? Yeah, if or you watch, there's that video going around on Twitter of him limping on the way out with the team down the hallway. Now, I also like Evander Kane going full, full uh, Willy Wonka, <laughs> like with the, with the limp on the cane, and he gets on the ice, and he like his stick gets stuck, and he drops it, and he somersaults, and he just takes off skating. I have a lot of time for Evander Kane Willy wonking us with this limp. He just might be. I think we're going to watch that movie tonight for Nielsen Family Movie Night. We're going to watch the original again. Watched it a couple weeks ago. Here's a question that I'll throw out there that might annoy hockey fans. After Saturday, if Kane is banged up, would you consider just sitting him for the three games? Yes. And the bye week and let him rest up and bring him back sure. against Vegas? LTIR. Load management, basically. If Evander Kane has an injury... That should require him, like, if he has an injury that needs two weeks to heal and then he's going to be fine, then give him the two weeks to heal and let him be fine. Like, what are you going to do? You're going to run this guy ragged until you get to the playoffs oh, and he's not going to be able to have an impact? The so Oilers can afford to not have Patrick Kane or have Evander Kane for, for next week against Chicago and Columbus and Nashville. Like, you should be fine. Well, it's a tough man's game, though. No, tough I know, enough, but I mean, not he tough enough to here. grind it out this much. I know, but man, I can't get that image of him Willy Wonkin us out of this. Give thing. it to That's me. Amazing. He, he just might. That would be amazing. What an all-time play. He likes to troll a bit. Hey, Lord maybe KC. he's helping them set up for an LTI ride prior to the deadline. Why not? They go go look. He's been limping since this game back here. Yeah. Retroactive, as they say. Yeah. Right. So there's something obviously going on there. I think they're in a spot now where they're comfortable enough that they can uh, that they could give him some rest if uh, if the problem can be helped. By that. Yeah, see, Zedmo knows what I'm talking about. He won't come off the ice. You have to, you have to drag him off. But you, you just sit him down and be like, scene. I know. Like, I would think Evander Kane things. would understand know, if course. you sat him down like, hey, look, we're going to take take two weeks, let you heal up, because who cares about Columbus, Chicago, and Nashville? Oh, totally. We need you against either the Golden Knights or the Canucks or the Kings or whoever Stretch playoff out. time. It looks like Evander could use a Kane. <laughs> Oh! <laughs>
All right. Uh, let's get out before it gets worse. Uh, we've got Murray McCourt and Jay Milne coming in on the Hangout today at uh, 9 o'clock. That's just over an hour from now, so make sure you stick around for that. If you would like to play Kind of Easy Trivia right now, uh, hit us up. Let's go. 780-218-9999. We've got a gift certificate to Mr. Mike's Steakhouse Casual just sitting there waiting for you. 780-218-9999. Let Maddie know that you would like to play today, and he will grab it. You will play Kind of Easy Trivia coming up just after 8 o'clock. Three questions too many on the way. Pat Steinberg from The Fan down in uh, Calgary. We're going to connect with him around 820, find out exactly where the Flames are at right now. I'm very interested to see where people in the market think they should go with that club. And then Curly Gittins Jr. is going to join us around 830. And we'll get his thoughts on being reunited with McLeod Bethel Thompson. That is on the way in hour number three. But if you want to play kind of easy trivia right now, 780-218-9999. Let's get to a sports update for Claiborne Services. If you're looking for work, they're the guys. ClaiborneServices.com. Let's go to LT. Edmonton Oilers waking up this morning third in the Pacific, a point up in the Kings with a game in hand following last night's 12th straight victory, a 4-2 win over the visiting Kraken. Four points from Leon Dreisaitl, a pair of goals from Warren Fogle. Oilers look to make it 13 in a row tomorrow night down in Calgary as the Flames saw their four-game win streak snap last night. Leafs four, Flames three, Austin Matthews with the hat trick. LA have lost 10 of its last 11. They fall to the Preds 2-1. Vegas dumping the Rangers 5-1 of the Canucks. Edging up the Coyotes 2-1, Vancouver reaching the 30-win mark. The first club in the NHL to do so this season. Four games around the AJ tonight, including Sherwood Park at home to Camrose. Raptors with a loss, 116-110 to Chicago. Eight games around the NBA tonight. The Raps are back in action tomorrow evening when they visit the Knicks. Edmonton Oil Kings hit the ice tonight. They'll welcome in the Prince Albert Raiders to Rogers Place. Puck drops 7 o'clock. Golden Bears and Pandas basketball. They'll take their show on the road. They're visiting Fraser Valley for a pair of games beginning at tonight. And you can join the entire Edmonton Sports Talk crew for Super Bowl 58 as we'll be at the Century Casino Sports Bar and Lounge. Century Casino Fort Road, February 11th. Menu items under $10, drink specials, and your chance at prizes throughout the day. And a meet and greet with the one and only Renee. The sports update brought to you by Claiborne Services. They are hiring now, looking for journeyman bricklayers and all levels of apprentices. Start a new career or take your current one to the next level with their well-established mentorship program. Visit www.claiborneservices.com for more. Something happening here The Oilers look a lot better this year Another win, put two points on the board Telling me your faith is restored I think it's time you stop, listen, here we go Wake up with the morning after show This year's team's looking strong Connor and Leon, they can't do no wrong Six o'clockers are losing their minds Getting so many messages on the text line Think it's time you stop, listen, here we go Wake up with the morning after show I know it's the morning after show song we play in the six o'clock hour But it's just such a banger when the team's rolling, why not mix it in a little bit more? You, you right? can do whatever you want. We can do, yeah, yeah we can do whatever, whatever we want. want. What's uh, somebody going to call up? Be like, I can't do that. <laughs> nope. You can do whatever we want, which is uh, which is fun. Pat Steinberg is going to join us from Sportsnet. How about that? He's going to be by around eight twenty. We can do whatever. Uh, Nine thirty today. Curly Gittens Jr. is in. Uh, Pat Maroon's bib says Curly Gittens is the name of a man who served Doc Holiday a couple of bourbons. Kind of sounds now. I mean, are you joking or was there actually a character in Tombstone named Curly Gittens? Because it does sound like a tombstoneish name. Yeah, it could have been spelled differently, but you yeah, know. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, I like that. That's good. Edmonton Oilers have won twelve in a row. What a run! And they're not done yet. You think Connor McDavid is going to allow a twelve-game winning streak to be snapped by the Calgary Flames? Well, 
This is a team that's sitting comfortably in that third spot in the Pacific right now. The Flames are still battling for their wild card lives, Dusty. That's a, that's a dangerous animal. Hey, Connor, are you going to lose to the Flames on Saturday? No. No. Exactly. That's a hell of a thing for yeah. you to say to me. Connor, I don't like your chances of making a 13. That is a hell of a thing for you to say to me. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Maddie, who is going to play kind of easy trivia today? Owen is on the line. Owen! Oh, man. <laughs> uh, on Monday, I was doing some Owen bits with my buddies. Got to watch uh, that Monday show night. again, uh, hey? I got to... Uh, it's a great... It's, it's an absolutely wonderful, wonderful movie. Maybe audible that into family movie night tonight, eh? Yeah. yeah. Hey, Tam, what do you think of it? Instead of watching uh, Willy Wonka with the kids, we watch Throw Mama from the Train. I don't think I don't think that's gonna fly. Uh, kind of easy trivia brought to you by Mr. Mike Steakhouse Casual, the casualest place ever in the Hampton Inn on the corner of 137th Ave. Mark Messier Trail, the Moose. Uh, they got the six o'clocker logger on tap up there, so go crush that, and they'll just keep her coming, which is nice. Uh, all right, let's go to Evan. Evan, are you ready to play? Sure am. Sure. All right, here we go. How often do you hear that, dude? I have to be honest with you. Every time I go to my shop. Really? Oh, man. Every That's time. Great Owen! Evan! Owen doesn't have any friends. Nobody likes you, Owen. You're a nincompoop. You get soda. <laughs> yeah, get <a> soda, <laughs> Owen. Uh, all right, here we go. I'll start the ticker after our first question. Good luck. Here. We need more. We need to get some clips yeah. for that. Yeah, we do. Uh, all right, here we go. Good luck, man. You need three out of five. Which Edmonton Oiler scored two goals last night? Four and total. How many goals did Stuart Skinner allow? Two. Which team lost to the Leafs last night? Oh, uh, pass. How many teams remain in the NFL playoffs? Four. Who do the Bills play this weekend? The Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> oh, Evan! Evan, I must blew it. No! No! Oh, my God. Damn it, Shake, stop it! They are going to remember that AM radio is a viable and modern source for news and entertainment. Totally. People don't listen to AM like they used to. Seems like it's more about FM and color TV. That's stupid. It sure is, Kevin. I'm stoked. You stoked? I'm stoked. Just I'm so stoked. stoked. You yeah. cannot come to my house. No, 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 not today. You cannot come to my house. No, 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 not today. <laughs> Eight oh eight on the Nielsen Show. Uh, How'd you say eight oh eight? Evan, <laughs> Evan, no, no. <laughs> three out of five. When he, when he didn't get the flames, we get to the NFL and he confidently said four. I was like, oh oh, clock's ticking down. Evan needs to step up, and uh, and he did. He did just in the nick of time, and Evan is going to uh, Mister Mike's. Get that 6 o'clock at Lager on tap. The Oilers are hotter than blank right now. You can fill that bad boy in. Let's go. Fill it in. Quick one text of the day for A&W. And go pick up those uh, spicy dill pickle mama burgers today for a limited time only at a and Dub. All right, here we go. Let's get into uh, three questions too many today. Lieutenant Eric, do you have a lineup for the segments? <laughs> What's that? Is that me yelling, Owen? <laughs> I, got, I got a I found a soundboard. Do you have a soundboard? Here. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, let me. Is your is your computer plugged no, in? No. And then when you do that, it switches the uh, what's it switch the preferences and everything. I don't think we can. What? This might have, send yeah, me the link to it. I'll bring it up yeah, on yeah, my yeah, computer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah send oh, me yeah, the yeah, link right now. Thanks, you man. found Thank an you, man. Owen soundboard. Yeah, man. Yeah. I don't know if we need access to an Owen soundboard on a Friday. Well, you know, it's Friday though. We we don't. Have I know, but no beer of the week. No beer of the week today. They don't have a flyer out in the area, so we're gonna do beer of the week next week. What's that? That's true. We do. We do have two guests. Be in our best. But we could do a bunch of Owen soundboard stuff if we really wanted to. Uh, check your DMs. Oh, I will check my DMs. This is exciting. Uh, do you have a liner for the segment today? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I have three questions to me. It's brought to you by the great staff at Park Mazda, including dealer principal Mitch Lewicki, who wishes his first name was Owen, but it's not. Park Mazda, your dealer for life. Visit them online, parkmazda.ca. Do you have a... Tw- Whoa! Yeah, you're do you gonna, have a Twitter account? It's uh, at Lieutenant underscore Eric. 
I found a, I found that photo of our uh, EST Christmas mixer of YouTube Trev, and we were talking about the uh, oh yeah yeah, yeah. The areolas yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I uh, <laughs> put that up there, a little caption contest this morning, <laughs> and of course the uh, the packs that we cracked this morning as well. I believe I said you were going to lay the smackdown on your Rudy Poo candy ass as the Rockies. Oh the yeah, cards yeah, yeah, the yeah, 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 so, yeah. That uh, makes sense. Yeah. Should I try to click one of these things? Let's see here. Sure. This could take us down a real deep hole here. Who's this? <laughs> Who's this? Owen! 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 Yes, you do. You don't have a cousin Patty. <laughs> you don't have a cousin Patty. He's trying to kill me. I said he's trying to kill me. He's trying to kill me. There's a murderer in the house. Okay, we got to move along. We got to move along. Just under food, can you play soda with ice, please? Oh, okay. Uh, soda with ice. Get me a soda with some ice in it. <laughs> I we, asked for the salted nuts. He brought me the unsalted nuts. We just tuck this thing away. Oh. We, we can just be happy. You know? Yeah. Okay, one more quick one. One more quick one. Anyways, one more quick one. Owen loves his mama. Owen loves his mama. All right, question. Uh, Here we go. Question, question uh, number. Of, oh, do you have a Twitter account? Yeah. Did you already no, do that? We've already gone through. Oh, that. We already did that. Yeah. I got. But you can follow me on Instagram as well. I'm at, yeah. at Lasagna Enthusiast on Instagram, all one word. I would love his mama. All right. Question number one. Well, we've already kind of got to this, but you keep hitting it over and over and over again. Skinner. So I answer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the question. It's sitting right here. Would you start Skinner against Calgary? Yes. And I look, I, I'm at the point where I'm not even answering the question. I'm asking, why are we asking the question? Okay, can I answer that? Yes. Maybe you think you don't need him because McDavid's going to go off super nuclear tomorrow. No, no. There's no there's no reason. There's no reason not to... Maddie, do you have a reason not to play Skinner? You look like you're leaning in. Is he tired? You, you go with... You look for the, you put the record aside, you put the flames aside, you put the idea that the, you don't want your provincial rival to knock you out, and you put the idea of, okay, Skinner needs a rest. Why? Because you're looking at what happened last year when Skinner played too many games and what happened in the playoffs. So it's, you've got to have a schedule of when he's not playing and when he is playing. That would be the one thing that I think you would well, have. Why would you play him last so, night if you weren't going to play him against Calgary? What do you mean? Like, if you're going to, if you want to give him, well, I th- off, like what, I don't know. What, yesterday doesn't have anything to do with Saturday. I would think. I would think that because he played yesterday, you know, he, like you could give him. You then take Saturday off. That's that could be the thinking of Chris Knobloch is that he's yeah, played they, all these games now, going to take it off, give him a rest, bring him back on Tuesday, Thursday maybe or Tuesday or whatever. If Chris Knobloch has a thing where it's okay, we you, need we need to get rest for Stuart Skinner. We're going to map this out the rest of the season, and this is one of those games where you've mapped it out and going, yeah, this is a rest day for him. That's why you do it because you worry about winning the war, which is the playoffs. But you, well, you, sure, you're, you're starting Skinner. You're just I, I would from, start yeah, yeah, yeah. Skinner you're just saying because this could be a reason that. I see. Then you could go Pickard on Tuesday, Skinner for two. Then you got the bye week coming up. Yeah, but also like if they don't play Skinner, like why does everyone want him to play in this game? Because they're focused on the record. They're focused on you don't want to lose it to the Battle of Alberta rival of, no, of I, the Flames. I think That's where a lot of people your are. Best lineup against Calgary, regardless of if there's a streak or not. Why? Because it's the Calgary Flames. It's a provincial well, rival. Right, so they're now you're dealing with the rival game, whereas if you're Chris Knobloch, you might be sitting there, and again, I'm not saying he's doing yeah, this, yeah, I'm not saying yeah, he yeah. should, but he could be sitting there saying, I don't care about the rivalry, I care about the playoffs. And I think the best thing for Stuart Skinner is getting some rest, and I believe this is the best time to give him that rest. And it's about winning the war, which is playoff time, <laughs> having Skinner ready, and not winning this battle, which is your provincial rival. Yeah, but it, to me, he's going to get the same amount of rest if he gets this game off or he gets the game off on Tuesday. So, well, I, unless why would you it not was, play this maybe he, the plan is only to play him two of the next four. Yeah. And this is one of the two, and he gets also another game off somewhere else. Or maybe he maybe he gets Saturday, the two Saturdays off. Maybe he doesn't play Calgary, plays the two games Tuesday, Thursday, then gets the Saturday off against Nashville. And then because there is a little quick turnaround Thursday to Saturday, in a sense, it's a seven o'clock on Thursday night. Then it's a two o'clock afternoon against Nashville on Saturday. So it is a little bit of a quicker turnaround than you typically would by a few hours. So maybe he looks at it and go, okay, I'm going to play Skinner Tuesday, Thursday. Pickard will get Saturday, Saturday. Then it's bye week. 
because you also like picker will have to play a lot or backup goalies gonna have to play a lot in the second half of the, or after the all-star break because there's a lot of back-to-backs who there's now we're gonna have to encounter but that would be the only reason. I'm not saying I'm for You're it. You're just saying you would start. You're but just there, to make a there's case. the yeah. argument that I would. I think yeah. you would have from Chris Knobloch if he goes with someone not named Stuart Skinner. And I Skinner. don't think he will. I don't think he will. We were just trying, like, my, I guess I, because I brought up the other question, well, why would we even have this conversation? Maddie's just trying to say, why would we have this conversation? Top 10 pick is in this says, this is a ridiculous thought. Provincial rival, Hockey Night yeah, Canada, no. going for 13 wins. These things are all important. Sure. Yeah. But, but what's more important? Fan. All of that or having Stuart Skinny, Skinner ready for the playoffs. What's more important to you, top 10 pick? I would say all of that because he can get the rest by not playing Tuesday. But if Chris, no- if Chris Knobloch is saying that he needs the rest to, on Saturday for whatever plan he has for the playoffs, again, what's then more important if Chris Knobloch does rest Skinner? Having him ready for the playoffs or the fact that it's Hockey Night Canada Provincial Royal going for 13? What say you? 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. If you are watching on YouTube today, we ask a couple of things of you. Hammer the thumbs up. We would appreciate that. And subscribe to the channel as we continue to push our subscriber base up, hoping to hit uh, you know 7,000. That'll be the next uh, check mark for the guru here. Question number two. Oh, I think this one might be an easy one, too. <laughs> Because that one was very easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Well, I mean, it's supposed to be. But, uh, which player is facing the most pressure in the NFL this weekend? What was the question? Sorry. Which player is facing the most pressure in the NFL this weekend? Okay. Uh, but so, it, so it has to be a quarterback. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It has to be Josh Allen. Yeah, uh, Lamar. Lamar. No, Dude, Josh Lamar. more than Lamar. Really? Jo- yeah. It's well, Josh you've, Allen. You've been waiting around though. Now, and it's your. your again, the Bills should be here. Five percent chance. Don't try to take this pressure off of Josh Allen. You can make an argument here. This is the play. same as the, uh, the, the because you can make an argument. If you're looking here. at legacy or something, yeah, Lamar needs to win in the playoffs. But Lamar's going to have two around. MVPs He's right been away. Sitting around though, Josh He's doesn't have anything. Stroud's coming in on fire. Yeah, but Josh Allen doesn't have anything. No, I get that. This he needs something. This is 100 percent Josh Allen. Because the Bills, what do they always say? They've been waiting to get this home game and make Mahomes play on the road. Yep. And Allen has looked good in some of these games against the Chiefs. There right? like, he's played well. Mahomes they just happened to get like teams, yeah. a little bit more. I like Josh Allen a lot. But I just don't think there's any any player in the league this weekend facing more. If Josh Allen doesn't play well, and he's played, like, even if he plays well and they lose, people are going to be like, well, Josh Allen can't get it done against his Kansas City Chiefs. But if he plays poorly and they lose, man, I mean, he can't do anything because he's amazing. You're not going to, you know, I saw people being like, oh, the Eagles should move on from Hurts. Like, that conversation's not going to happen. But, my goodness, that'd be a tough pill to swallow, They, I think. they weren't even supposed to be here. They weren't even supposed uh, to be because here. Because they, they were supposed Lamar. to be here. That would have been a no, huge were, ripping of Josh I, Allen. At the beginning of the year, the Bills were supposed to be in this game. It's, at, I know the how they got there, but they were supposed then, to be then, in. Then it turned into a 5% chance, and now they're hosting the Chiefs. Think about that. Now, the Ravens. Lamar's number two, easily. Well, I put him as number one. There's not another card of the The other two games, the NFC is like that. Because you can't lose to the Texans. That's where there's the playoff questions against Lamar Jackson. You lose to the Texans, that's where it comes up. But look, that's the criticism of Josh Allen, that they didn't win more games this year. They should have been in a better spot. But in the end, they finished second in the regular season in the AFC. You've got the KC coming home. Josh Allen needs some sort of something on his resume, and he doesn't have that as of yet in his career. Well, how about somebody else who does it? Filthy from Calgary, Mahomes has to win away from home. How but he's got for, the how rings. About that for a legacy. But he's how got that rings. For a legacy. Yeah, but if you can't win away from home, <laughs> can't win away from home. You're stretching now. You're stretching Come now, on, boys. It is Come Josh on. Allen. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Well, maybe a few buts. Big yeah. ones. Maybe Allen won A, Jackson won B. I'll settle it's on that. It's a one and two situation. Uh, one more question before we get to Steinberg. Uh, somebody said, hey, guys, in honor of the Oilers winning, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Frey sent me that video. He texted it. Did he? This morning. He goes, I don't know if he can do anything with this. Well, I was no, I was wondering, Maddie, we probably can't play a Sesame Street song on here, eh? I wouldn't think on YouTube. Never rattled him with the Jackson. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Do, 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 Going through do. the pinball machine. No, but the question is, what was your favorite Sesame Street? Se- favorite thing about Sesame Street? You, have, I will say the countdown thing was one of my favorites. I always was excited to see what the show was brought to you by. There was so much on that show in the early days. I know. Right? Like, they had a lot of depth. 
all those psychedelic cartoons and, and stuff that really has has imprinted our lives. You don't even mm. know it. It's so deep in your subconscious, right, that you move on in life and you do all these other things. I just like when they would hang out on the street. You can have your animations and all yeah. of that, and then they'd go to different sets. You know, they'd be on that. Bert and Ernie were always a couple of fun guys. Always getting guys. To- I, I, I liked when they would go back into, like, Big Bird's place. And, like, I'm a big Snuffleupolis guy. Um, but yeah, when they would kind of, you wouldn't see it very often, but the odd time when they go back into like big birds, place. well, they went into, yeah, they'd go down the street. Who's the guy that had the hardware store there? Uh, or, or whatever it was, the corner store. I liked when they go into all those other things. I, I liked when they're on the street, you know, you had uh, Oscar the Grouch and his can, then you went to the middle part there and they could do a bunch of activities and then yeah. kind of that, uh, you know, the middle ground. And then you'd go down the street to Snuffy's place and, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. <laughs> you need to look up more of those bits. Of like the, Sesame Street yeah, bits? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The best ofs. Uh, that would be pretty good. Okay, your favorite favorite part about Sesame Street. Lots of good musical guests as well. Buffy St. Marie's on there with the uh, the mouth harp one time. You don't want to get anyone you know, yeah. doing that stuff. And- Sesame Street's is Sesame Street still going? It must be, but it's like it's just taking yeah, a major hit, I would think, because everybody else can just do like similar things on YouTube. And well, stuff. what's a uh, Bluey Shoey or whatever? Well, his name well Bluey's is. a I mean, cartoon. I mean, yeah. it's different. I don't think Bluey's going directly at Sesame Street, yeah. but like like a Blippy and that type of stuff, I think would kind of take a run, maybe of that. I don't know our kids. Our kids were never in uh, ever in, never into. Uh, you know, what I really liked Sesame was the uh, that Muppet Show. Hey, eh? the Muppet Show. Never really watched the Muppets oh, that much. God, that was another yeah. good one. Yeah. Did you have to choose? Could you be Muppet guy or did you have to be Sesame Street guy? I think it was kind of a... You could, you could enjoy both. Yeah. You could enjoy both. All right, speaking of enjoying things, Oilers fans are very much enjoying a 12-game winning streak. They'll look to run it to 13 at the Saddle Dome on Saturday against the Calgary Flames. Flames last night coming up just short against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Austin Matthews had one of those games to break it down from Sportsnet uh, 960 down in Calgary. Pat Steinberg joins us. Uh, Pat, good morning, sir. How are you? What's up, boys? How are we doing? I'm doing just fine. It is great to talk to you on a show because, like, forever, yes. I, we couldn't get, we, like, when right. we were doing TSN, we couldn't get you on. And this is awesome, Patty. I love it. So does, does this, does this, do I get to be part of, is this now that, like am I am I part of the AM nasty? Like hey. is this, is well, this, welcome can aboard. I, can I be a part of it? You're you're allowed. You're in, Pat. By request, you're in. And uh, yeah, the nasties are gonna love you now. You just went over a ton of people <laughs> this morning, which is which is great. Uh, tell us about last night's game first. I mean, Austin Matthews was doing Austin Matthews things. Uh, was it a pretty tight hockey game last night? Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, it was actually, you know, all things considered, from the Flames. I mean, they had a they had a twelve minute run from the end of the first into maybe about fourteen minute run from the end of the first into the mid stages of the second, where a two nothing lead turned into a four two deficit, and and you know the 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 Leafs and, and Austin Matthews, who had points on all four of them, three goals and an assist. He, they they swung the game pretty dramatically, and that's what a team when they've got that type of talent. Um, but you know, all things considered, the Flames had some had some decent moments in that game. I thought they were solid for the first forty outside of that swing. I thought the first period was one of their best first periods they've played all year. Um, but uh, again, they they kind of just managed the game poorly in the middle stretch there, and a good team punched him in the mouth, which is a really good lesson for the team that they're playing on on Saturday night because it, it, it's the same thing. If Flames get off to a great start, sure, but if they start managing the puck like they did against Toronto, well, you know, a team that's feeling it like the Oilers and with top players like the Oilers and the way those top players have played for the last month plus here, um, you know they're they're, they're going to get burnt the same way. So they they played all right. They they had I didn't like their third period. The the Leafs, even though they didn't score in the third, kind of caved them in in the final frame. And the Flames got a I don't know kind of a controversial tying goal called back on a on a hand pass. But by the rule book, it was a hand pass and was a really savvy challenge from Sheldon Keefe on the Leafs bench. So you know they they won four straight prior and and. Looking to make it five of the of the five in that stretch, I thought it was an okay game. I didn't love them against Arizona either when they came from behind to win. But 
That was an all right game, but more, most importantly, guys, I just think it was a uh, good lesson for the team they're playing tomorrow that you guys know well. Well, Pat, I just wanted to get your thoughts on the fan base down there and this this club seven and three over its past ten. Of course, a little four game streak there, but straddling that wild card divide, uh, buyer seller somewhere in between. Uh, what's the fan base think of this Flames team kind of hovering around the wild card right now? Oh boy, it's it's um, well, it's in this market. It's kind of there's there's a pretty. I don't want to say there's a large split, but there's. There's a lot of different opinions right now because you've got a Flames team that, first of all, is where they always seem to be. I mean, outside of the year where these two teams, the Flames and Oilers, met in the playoffs a couple of years ago, this is this is where the Flames always are. They're not bad enough to be a lottery team. They're not good enough to be considered a cup contender. And I don't think anybody's going to sit here and say that the Flames are, you know, looking like bona fide Stanley Cup contenders right now. So. They're in that mushy middle, and with a new general manager and three high-profile pending unrestricted free agents, there's there's kind of this feel from a lot of people in this market that you know maybe it is time to pivot, and maybe it is time to be pretty pragmatic and, and make a couple of moves and maybe try to set yourself up a little bit better for the future and see if you can't trade a, a Noah Hannafin, an Elias Lindholm, a Chris Tanev, and, and get some future assets back and, and see if you can't get yourself to a better place down the road in a few years with some of the assets you get back. But then, yeah, and, and so there's a lot of people who want to see them do that. There's a lot of people who want to see them go even further and just completely blow up the whole thing and, and see if they can't, can't get a couple of high picks over the next couple of years. I don't think they're going to do that. Uh, I don't think they're going to go big time buy mode either because I think Craig Conroy, the new GM and this management group, is a pretty good feel that, you know, th- this group's more competitive than the way they started and they're maybe not as bad as perhaps it was trending early on. But I also don't think there's a feel that with this core group that, okay, this is it. This is the group that's going to bring the Flames back to the promised land or even close. So I do think we're going to see them make a couple of big moves. I do think you're going to see at least one, if not two, of Lindholm, Hannafin, and Tanev dealt. And you can make a pretty good argument. It should be three. I don't think it's going to be three, but... I think they're going to make a, a, a couple of moves here, and by doing that, they're they're going to get themselves some future assets. And by doing that, they're probably also going to become a little less competitive because those deals are going to most likely be future oriented deals. So it's it's interesting. There's just there's there's still a group of people though, guys. It's like, well, look, they're they're seven and yeah. three in their last ten. They've worked themselves back into the mix. They shouldn't do that. So. It's a fascinating conversation down here. Well, in this situation, I mean, it basically has to come right down to the deadline, right? Because if they can continue to play pretty well, it's going to be tough to tear it, like to te- not tear it. Well, the guys that you've named, man, that's kind of tearing a team apart. It'd be tough to do that if you're sitting in a wild card spot at the deadline. Yeah, that'd be I, tough I to think, do. I, I think, so the problem is, is that, first of all, Craig Conroy, when he was introduced in May, one of the the first things he said is, we're not letting another Johnny Gaudreau happen. And by that, they mean we're not going past the deadline and having a high-profile UFA unsigned and putting themselves in a spot where they can lose a guy for nothing. So I really do believe that if we're talking, and and on the Hannafin front, there's still some decent dialogue there and wouldn't be a shock if we saw the Flames and Hannafin agree on something. But, you know, I think I think the initial conversations with Tanev, the Flames were at two years and Tanev was looking for more term. And I, I really think that the conversations are really far apart on the Lindholm front. So if, if Lindholm is not signed, by March eighth, I, I think they're going to trade him, regardless if they're in a in a division spot, which is unlikely, or if they're in a wild card spot, which is a little bit more realistic, or or at least there's more potential. I still think they'll make a deal, and I, I the same is true with Tanev and Hannafin. Think 
guys think Nashville last year, like when, when you guys got Ekholm in, in that market, that's because Nashville was making some pragmatic moves. They traded to Ekholm. They traded Niederreiter. They traded Grandlin. They got that huge haul for Janot from Tampa. Yeah. And, and they made those deals, but they stayed competitive. Guys, it was the Predators that eliminated Calgary last year in Game 81 in a shootout. The Preds were in the mix longer than the Flames were last year. So it's it's one of those scenarios where they, they were able to trade guys away, but they also stayed competitive. And despite making all those moves, they were still a tough out. And I think if the Flames are going to make some of these moves, the goal is they're not going to wave the white flag on the season. But obviously you take those names out of the mix. And it is going to be a much more difficult thing for them to stay in the playoff race. It, again, it's one of the most fascinating years that we've had down here in a long time because of these UFAs and because of how things have gone since Kachuk got traded and since Goudreau went to Columbus. Well, lots to talk about, and that's good for you guys. Patty, as always, buddy, really appreciate it, man. Thanks a lot. Boys, that was fun. Be well. Have a good weekend. There you go. That's Pat Steinberg. He works a lot. What an appearance. Down in Calgary. Steinberg is always grinding down there at Sportsnet 960. The fan. It'll be fat. I mean, yeah. I mean, you're going to be in a really weird spot. Like he said, even if they're in a wild card spot, he thinks if they don't have a contract down with Lindholm, they're going to have to move him to the deadline. And I would agree. Awkward, hey? Yeah. Maybe is, is a term. You uh, got to get, uh, get something for him. I mean, you Pat just have to. Steiner trending to be the earliest rookie to the beauty lister, a newcomer that may steal the show. Somebody said the Reed Wilkins of Calgary. Yeah, as this well. was a great uh, text. Uh, Welcome, Pat Steinberg. <laughs> Reed Wilkins of Calgary. Dude takes phone calls until midnight most game nights and mostly from crazy Flames fans. That comes from Paul in Calgary. Nasty Club number 91. He's a Nasty Club member. You can become a Nasty Club member, too. You get post-show shows. Yesterday on the post-show show was a funny one. We put everything in the office on the desk. Just, to, just to hope you. Tommy would see it <laughs> yeah. and then lose his mind. Uh, so, yeah, if you go to EdmontonSportsTalk.com, click on Nasty Club. You can find the details to us. I'm there. Get access to all the songs and, and things like that as well. Busy third hour on the show continues. And a busy off-season for the Edmonton Elks as well. Uh, they go out and they... Uh, they convince and recruit MBT, McLeod Bethel Thompson, to come back to the Canadian Football League. And then they go out and trade their all-star defensive lineman, Jake Serezna, for one of MBT's old targets, Curly Gittins Jr. And he joins us on the show this morning. Curly, welcome to Edmonton, man. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? Uh, we are doing just fine. I mean, we have to start with the trade. Did you see it coming? Did you have an idea it might happen? Or did it completely catch you off guard? Um, no, I honestly, and you know, obviously in professional business, you know, in professional sports, um, you know, you got to expect the unexpected, you know, and I'll be honest, I didn't see it coming, but, uh, you know, I'm just excited to be in Edmonton, especially, you know, uh, being back with my guy, uh, Mac. Well, you know, let's talk a little bit about your relationship with him. Cause you had a huge season with him a couple of years ago. And I'm, I'm glad you brought that up about, you know, being excited to be in Edmonton cause it has not been very um, productive around here as far as wins go for the last couple of years, but they bring out, they bring in MBT to try to take that next step. What's your relationship with, what's your relationship with him like? And how much did he help you a couple of years ago emerge as a star in the Canadian football league? Um, he's helped me uh, tremendously, to be honest with you. Uh, he's such a great guy and, you know, he loves football and I love football too. And, you know, we just, you know, we just work, you know what I mean? Like, we just, it's just something about, you know, just us two. It's just, you know, we we just click. We just work. Uh, we appreciate each other, you know, and uh, ultimately he knows, you know, I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to give him my all you know, each and every single day. And I know he's going to give, give, uh, you know, give uh, me his all. And uh, I've been with Max since uh, 2019. So since I got drafted uh, to Toronto, he, Max been there. And ever since, you know, ever since, you know, I've met him. He actually told me my first ever cast in the CFL. So, you know, he just, you know, for for me to have a guy like that, you know, I don't want to let him down. So, you know, it makes me work even harder. Curly, um, you mentioned your relationship with him, and that's well documented. Uh, what can fans expect here in Edmonton from McLeod, Bethel, Thompson? And now, obviously, you getting into the mix and the relationship you guys have. But just if you could tell fans what to kind of expect from this type of quarterback uh, that's now playing for this franchise. Uh, you can just, you know, expect um, him just to be himself. You know, he's not going to try to be anyone. If anyone, he's not. 
And, you know, he comes to work every single day, you know, just works his uh, tail off and, you know, he'll give, he'll give you all, all he can on game days, you know, and just, just know that, you know, everything that he's doing right now, as of right now is, you know, it's, you know, it's for, you know, it's for him to, you know, try to, you know, deliver you guys, the fans, you know, a winning season, you know, so I'm sure he has that on, on his mind all, all season. And, uh, yeah, that's, you know, where a guy like him, you know, he's just, you know, he's literally going to give the the fans of Edmonton uh, all he can. You had, uh, I, I would classify 2021 as kind of your breakout season. You had 605 yards, you had four touchdowns. And then 2022, you took it to a completely another all-star level, over 1,100 yards, five touchdowns. Last year, you only managed to get into 10 games. How difficult was last season for you trying to remain healthy? Um, it was a little difficult to be honest with you, but you know, you gotta, you know, as a professional athlete, you gotta understand, you know, like things aren't going to go your way all the time. You know, obviously you hope for things to go, uh, to go your way all the time, but you know, you, you know, you gotta expect some adversity, you know, and last year was, you know, it was a year filled with adversity and, you know, I kind of just, you know, took it as a year just to learn, uh, just to grow, you know, uh, elsewhere, obviously I wasn't on the field, but I can grow, I grew men- mentally stronger. You know what I mean? And, you know, just kind of learn about myself in, in other ways, you know, besides playing on the football field. And, you know, I'm just taking it as a way, just, you know, as a way to grow. Um, obviously, I know what I can do once I'm on the football field. And, you know, I know in life, you know, everything isn't going to be all, you know, sunshine and, you know, rainbows. You know, I know sometimes I'm going to have to go through a little bit. And last year was was that year. And, you know, and I expect, you know, my, my work ethic is still going to be the same. I'm expecting, you know, just to have a, to have a great year and just, you know, keep, you know, keep being me and, you know, just I'll give everything I got to this game that I love. Pretty good receiving core that you come and join here. They kept Kyron Moore around. He had a nice year last year. They've got Dylan Mitchell on a restructured deal. And then obviously uh, Geno Lewis is one of the best receivers in the uh, Canadian Football League as well. Are you excited to play alongside a veteran guy like Geno? Oh, I'm super excited. I'm super excited to play along every, every receiver we got uh, in Edmonton. You know, like those guys are talented. Uh, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, we have one of the best receiving core, if not the best receiving core in the CFL. I'm just, and I'm just excited to, uh, you know, to get going with, uh, with the guys we got, you know, all those guys are ballers and, you know, I'm just, I'm excited just to be able to kind of learn from them, all, all of them, and just, you know, be, be able to take a little bit from my, everyone's game and see if I can see how I can incorporate it into my game. So I'm, you know, I'm truly just excited just to be in Edmonton. To be honest with you, <laughs> how, do, how do you spend? How do you spend your off season, man? How do you keep busy? What do you do? You have hobbies? You just working out all the time? How do you keep? How do you keep busy? Oh, well, I love the game of football, so I'm always trying to get better uh, at football. Um, but honestly, yeah, I'm, I'm mostly just uh, training. I got a daughter, daughter, so you know, I'm a little busy with her. Yeah, uh, taking taking her to daycare and whatnot. And then I got a little off season program I do here in, uh, in Toronto. It's like a mentorship program. For uh, for the youth, um, so I, I get you know I I stay busy you know I find ways to stay busy over here, um, but yeah you know I love the game of football and I got a I got a family and uh, I got an off season program that I that I love to do so, so you know, I'm always busy. No problem keeping busy. Well, welcome to uh, the Edmonton Elks, man. Looking forward to see you when you uh, arrive out here for camp and uh, yeah, congratulations on a great start to your CFL career. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. There you go. That is the most recent addition. Well, technically not the most recent addition because they've even signed a few guys since then. But uh, Curly Gittins Jr. being added to the receiving core in a critical Canadian role. Uh, let's continue this conversation because we had it. We were talking about before that trade, we were asked, I think, on three questions too many the day before. Yeah, were we not? Yeah. They've got on Gino. You, yeah. They've got Dylan Mitchell. A restructured deal, so he's not going anywhere. Uh, Kyron Moore is back again. And the people are saying, well, what are the other receivers here? Maddie, do you think it's just Gittins Jr. and then Cobb on the outside spot and they run Gittins in the slot with Kyron Moore and Dylan Mitchell and then Geno's yeah. on the other outside spot? I'm sure spot? there's going to be just some other name that we're not aware of. But now that, that, you, now that you have it, Gittins in the slot, could you yeah. run an American receiver on the outside there too or are you going to run two Canadian receivers? I mean, it opens it opens the door for you a little bit. I have to recall what they did. Like, like because Gittins I don't, can play the slot, but he could also play yeah. the outside if you want. So, I don't know. I think I feel like that fifth spot. We were talking about. It'll depend, I guess, where Gittins is going to line up. Line up for them, but I wouldn't mind. Like, if you had like an American physical slot, like a a, a younger Arsenal, almost. You know what I mean? Like, 
that's where I'm saying, like, I, I, there's probably some young guy that we aren't aware of that's yeah. going to be in camp. That they'll, they yeah, don't have money. They've, they've they don't have money to get pocket. anyone else. So, an Egadosi, if you will. <laughs> uh, he's not a slot guy. No, like, no, but like, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. The size and everything. Um, we had G Roy on yesterday. And he, he said he doesn't expect them to be too active in free agency. That's good to hear. But there are a couple of... Did he say a couple of big pieces that they would like to add? I feel like he said he said there was a couple of big pieces like that, which makes me think they might have a little bit of cap money to still maybe add. And he said... They said that last year, too, though. Bigger, faster, stronger. Those are the, Which we think is defensive line, offensive line. I would hope. Yeah. I would hope. That's the key, is you would hope, but... We'll see. Dunk tossed out Lanier as well as a potential name on that. He did, yeah, he did mention if if Jones could bring somebody like an Anthony Lanier, and uh, Lanier is actually pretty good. Jason Shivers in the mix relationship there. Yeah, mentioned Shivers as well. So we'll see. I am very intrigued to see what happens on the twelfth with this team. But but again, wait until I, and happens, I don't right? I don't like, even like need to final. see a defensive lineman come in because to your point earlier this week, Eric, is that Chris Jones can find those. I, the, the replacement for Serezna might be just some guy in a press release between now and June you that we don't know, know about. Exactly. But they need some offensive linemen that are proven in this league right now. And if they don't have that, doesn't matter. They brought in Gittins Jr. 780-218-9999. We're going to hit us up in the nasty chat as well. Hangout coming up here. Murray McCourt from The Ranch and the uh, golf show right here on Edmonton Sports Talk will be in. And uh, Jay Milne, ESC Glue guy, is going to be in as well. Uh, I love this guy. This guy went back to the Pittsburgh Penguins. 17-game winning streak, 92-93, and wrote this down on paper. He went back through the schedule. And found out which goaltenders started, how many times the starter started, how many times the backup started during the Penguins' 17-game heater in 92-93, in which they would eventually lose in Game 7 overtime to David Volick and the New York Islanders, and then the Montreal Canadiens would win the Stanley Cup on the strength of 10 overtime wins, and Patrick Wabi and absolutely lights up. Tom Barrasso started 14 of those games, and Kenny Reggett started three. Kenny Reggett. Now, in the end... I'm not too sure what this means, <laughs> but I really appreciate the guy doing the research. Just the in. Like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that effort alone. I mean, that effort alone. I don't know if we're comparing God bless Tom Barrasso and Ken Raggett to Calvin Pickard and Stuart Skinner and 1992-93 to 23-24, but I like the effort that you look at this. He wrote wow. it right down on what looks yeah. like, and it looks, the piece of paper looks like it came from 92-93. a chance to rip those names out every once in a while, right? You're not going to balk at that. Kenny Raggett. <laughs> You. Uh, look, I, I guess I guess this is what he wants, but I'll, I'll just say it right now. The Penguins should have played Ken Reggett more during that stretch. Sorry. I know Trev's got the hot take, Mitt, but I'm coming for it. Ken Reggett should have played more during the 92-93 17-game winning streak for the Pittsburgh Penguins because you know why? Was Tom Barrasso tired in the playoffs and ended up losing to the New York Islanders? I don't even technically remember Barrasso as the goalie on that David Volick goal. Did Kenny Reggett play in that game? Did Barrasso actually get hurt in the 92-93 playoffs? I don't know. Now, you know, it's now maybe, now maybe this ties in. Let me see here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look that up right now. I don't, in my mind, I remember where I was when I watched that goal because it meant that the Habs had a really good chance to win the Stanley Cup. I was at the, uh, I was at the El Rancho Hotel in, uh, in Lethbridge, Alberta as a 12-year-old. Losing my mind. No. Nope. <laughs> well, yeah, no, 92 93. Brasso played 12. Kenny Reggett. Games. <laughs> what was that? Did you just drop? You got to stop I playing know. Owen Clips. What? Can we, what I did lose this. Wait. Kenny, Kenny Reggett. <laughs> Kenny Reggett. Who's this? <laughs> Oh, uh, this is, yeah. Oh, man. I'll write you a how-to, how to fix your computer after, so when you plug that in, you can fix it. Uh, yeah, Wait, what was the, what's the issue? Well, with when he plugs it fine, in, it just it. messes up his Adobe for later for cutting things up, but I, it's a very quick just fix. just flip it after, right? But it's uh, his computer needs something else done with it for the click. I could That's quickly okay, write it, that you, out. You, and... you, you, you. That works perfectly fine, yeah. <laughs> 
Let off your fat little ass or I'll break it for you. No wonder he wanted to kill his mama. Yeah. Man. And if you're wondering, it's throw mama from the train. I saw some people be like, that's a mom from Goonies. So it's uh, throw mama from the train. Uh, but she was in Goonies. But she was the bad person in that the Goonies. She's a bad person. The, uh, uh, the nasties out there. Man, uh, is there no nincompoop line here? That was, uh, <laughs> that was one of my favorite ones. Nobody likes you. You're a nincompoop. Cousin Patty. <laughs> Stop it, damn it. <laughs> Though, I mean, we could use a couple of those. That's... uh. Yeah, that's not bad. Man, I, I, look, I don't drink a lot, but I'm having a little bit of a withdrawal right now because it's Friday. Well, I told you, it's a dry third hour here. And right we, got, yeah. we got nothing right now. This is our dry no January. Well, yeah. liquor beer we have week. a bunch of booze in our fridge. I know it's not. Whiskey if you want they're all wanna... from the beer of the week. Like the yeah, majority of what we have well, are we, still beer we of the have week. A cheers to one. Or yeah, I mean, like, you want to go also, by the way, I mean, we might as well go grab one. Up a bit. I found some one? more Mott's Clamato pickled bean and extra spicy. Where one were of, they? One of the bo- the box was a variety box, so I've thrown them in the fridge hey, too. Rick, bring me a two hoots. Yeah, it's bring me something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Either a two hoots or a Mott's Clamato pickled. Yeah. You little bastard! I said you desert me. Uh, yeah, this is uh, you know I'll play this clip. Trey Ford to Chris Jones. You little bastard! I said you desert me. <laughs> uh, uh, it's uh, that's a fun one. That's a fun one. Uh, yeah, hit us up. We're gonna get to text today. We got a bunch of stuff still to get to. I'll take that. Uh, Sound of the day. We'll get into the rap. Hangout's going to be good today. Milne and McCourt are both in. Somebody texted it earlier and said, McCourt's a great hangout guy. Yes, he is. He's got the tan going because he was in Mexico just what? after Christmas. Yeah, I could see the tan. The map. I could see the tan. McCourt, because he, I mean, at a golf course, he got pretty good tan a lot of the time. But it's even yeah. better now. Well, you're in Mexico. My God. Good looking cat. <laughs> good looking cat. I'm telling you. Uh, all right. So, you know, let's do a cheers to uh, Scott Laurie. Yeah. Who's not with us. Today, I mean, he'll be back. Hard work over the last. He'll be back. He'll be back next Friday. Yeah, the guy's been banging out the six o'clock or logger. And we got the two hoots here. This is actually from the sponsor of the uh, the hangout. They they roll out the Mott's Clamatos. They roll out the two hoots. They roll out the White Claws, which is going to be the sponsor of the hangout starting in February for three months. So uh, this is delicious stuff. If you've not tried the two hoots yet, man, you're 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 missing out. And Scott pulling extra duty next week. He will be in for the Sobeys liquor beer of the week, and then he will hang out. Afterwards, that's about cool. Time. About time. I think that's uh, I think that's a great Full idea. Scottish Premier League, two hours. Oh, at least an hour. Breaking down like, Arctic Thistle and uh, at least seven. one hour, and then we'll get into some Europa League. Sure, sure. <laughs> Come on, boys. Dream okay. the, so, other, the others could have won fifteen in a row by then. <laughs> yeah, but what are the Rangers doing? And I'm not talking New York Rangers here, baby. Oh. <laughs> My God. Oh, boy. Uh, all right. Are they the, is there any, like, what's their league? Do they have an FA Cup, League Cup? Scottish they must. Cup. Yeah. yeah what's happening Scottish there? Um, I, th- I think that was played a little while back. I always ask for can I, can I See if we can get the full update from Scott on that. I'm going to have a soccer hot take here. Oh, boy. Oh. Uh. Yeah. You guys will love this. Okay. Yeah, as a big fan of the NBA in-season tournament, of which LeBron has won, Jordan didn't win any. You have a banner. Um. There's a banner. You can say LeBron is uh, we have it's a major one for one. LeBron has never banner. LeBron has never lost an in season tournament. No. no. Um, Did they lose a game? No, they were seven and zero. Oh, I haven't lost. It, a it game was a great run. They didn't. They, they, he's unbeaten. Yeah. Um, there are too many tournaments to follow in soccer overseas. It, it's cups. There's well, the one. Cups, the tournaments. No. The, what do you mean? It's one. There's one. There's league various cup, cups. League cup. Oh, how many cups? What were we saying? Those you, are you the, like those are European championships. They're not but league. But see, this this alone is too difficult to understand because there's so many great leagues that they could compete against each other. There's not just one yeah, dominant league like, that can't the, compete. The in. cup where you play the teams that like are barely even professional, and then there's the that's different the, things. That's there. the in season tournament. How basically. many how many different cups are there? In which league? In all the leagues, like well, no, well, but you have to break it down by like, you guys talk. You're always like playing in this cup. We'll go in England. In England, there's four. 
That was, See, there's in, four in, no, cups in England. But that includes two European. Well, actually, there's be five if you count the other five European ones. Five cups in England. If you count the this, European ones. He's making this a lot more. This okay. is the thing, Matty. There's two right cups. Now. Also, before we do that, Scott Laurie, lots of kit talk on the Hangout next week. Oh. He's in the nasty chat. Oh, oh shut up, How Scott. great would that be? We have fourth round matches uh, starting today, actually, in the Scottish Cup with Clyde and Aberdeen. But Beautiful. you also got Scott's Rangers taking on Dumbarton. Ooh. In a different cup. And Celtic taking on Bucky Thistle. Sweet. This is all oh, that's fourth, a cool round, fourth round action. I got time Scottish for Cup. Bucky Thistle. Or, so, or are you more of a Greenock Morton on Montreal? So this is like a men's league it. team, right? Bucky yeah. Thistle would be like a men's league team? Well, pretty much. They're lower. See, so why, why do we care so much in, about men's league? Because they're most, playing like the Oilers. Yeah, imagine that. Wouldn't that be sweet? No, the Oilers probably aren't dressing their full lineup. They're dressing, you know, they're dressing their youth AJ team. Guy or yeah. AHL guys or whatever. But, yeah. It's, okay. Most countries, there's you have one cup and you have one league title you're going for. You have two you're going there's two things and then all the european countries come together and play where there's upwards of three trophies for that one there's champions league europa league conference yeah Tears. so that'd be like what's the conference That's it's like just the, the lower yeah so it'd be like those ones are if the nhl khl swedish hockey league all the leagues came together to have one or three tournaments you're having a hard time even explaining this man. well I'm, I'm trying to compare it and stuff but like so the countries themselves they only have two the NHL gives away two champions or two trophies. They give away a lot. You they give away the president's the Adams, trophies. The... I got a rice ball in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> I see these mix over. I don't. To me, there's just you just need to watch. It's, just, the, it's uh, too overwhelming no. to get into. I guess it's is what I'm saying. All you need to do is it's get like s- college football too. You need it presented. It's just in confusing a, in about a, college football. So many teams. And so many so games. So this is what you do. This is all you have to I know, do. You pick watch a the Wrexham show and right, right. he'll paint it. You pick a team. In college visual. football, you just you pick a, a team and you fold them. You just worry about them. Notre Don't worry Dame about fighting else. Irish. Then if it's in soccer, pick a competition and follow a team in that competition. That's it. So if you want to jump on with Liverpool, just follow their Premier League. That's it. And then once you understand but the Premier Liverpool's League. Liverpool's playing in how many different right. cups right now? But focus We're only on the Premier all. League. Uh. And then when you figure out the Premier League, focus on the FA Cup. And then slowly you'll learn it. But I, I shouldn't need to, like, refocus three times the cup for one team, to follow one team. You need a picture. Words, it's kind of, if, if you lay it out. It's, what do they call it? Uh, something diagram? A, a Venn diagram yeah. or whatever it is. is that? Any one of those flow charts. That's what I need. Partick Thistle take on Ross County. You also got Bunny Rig Rose and Falkirk. Inverness and Broomhill. St. Mirren taking on Queen of the South. Pain in the ass! Rangers have already won the Via Play Cup this season, says Scott Laurie. There you the go. What? The what? What are the Rangers? Play? The what? The Via Play Cup? Uh, sure. Yeah. What's that? Stop it, damn it! Uh, You're going right. to tell Scott Laurie he can't talk about soccer next week on the Hangout? Ooh. Or kits or all that? You're going to look Scott Laurie in the face and be like, Redbeard, no. Who's in there with you? <laughs> That's going to be next week. Scott's in real set. Who's in there with you? Scott Lowy? Red Bean? He didn't even come in last Friday. Uh, I think I'm doing half Owen's mom and half Cartman. Somebody yeah. texted yeah. somebody somebody text saying. saying it sounds like Cartman. <laughs> I think it's yeah. more of a Cartman. She I, know, I can so get the can Owen walk. part, but I lose it after that. Uh, all right, let's get into the rap for William Huff. Or there's a 112 in a row. I mean, does it get any better than this? Absolutely amazing. Uh, the rap for William Huff. If you want your place to look damn fine, just like ours, get it done. Bruce and the team at William Huff. WilliamHuff.com. They've been doing it since 1972. Go check out their website for your for your company. They got a bunch of different things that can make you take it to the next level. Took us to the next level. We would have been sitting here looking like we're in a hostage video. Instead, we look like we're in a million-dollar place in downtown New York City, the Big Apple. Yeah, those white walls really don't do it, hey? No. You can do it out in no, Vancouver, but uh, not, not here. This is way better. Uh, all right, what did you learn on the show today? Well, we learned that we now have a uh, new soundboard to incorporate into the program. You black bastard! You little bastard, I said you desert me! <laughs> I don't know how often we'll use it, but I'm going to bookmark it. That's there for are sure. a few in there that we could... We I bet could... you there's probably some other soundboards. You boys also need website. to just start getting back into our vault again. Yeah, yeah, pick a yeah, number. Yeah, yeah. Pick a number. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if I have Nasty access chat. to Pick a number right here. Right well, yeah. I'm not saying right now, no, but yeah. I, I think moving forward, pick there's, a number. there's a lot. There's a lot still to do there. Yeah, 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 that's that's correct. We do have to uh, to do that. There we are. Bookmark this tab. Done. 
She was legendary. There's no doubt about that. Uh, I learned that the Edmonton Oilers are never going to lose again because nothing rattles this team. You can't. He keeps just playing them over on his computer. I barely hear him. Um, the Oilers just don't get rattled. Down to nothing doesn't matter. That's where you they know, like it. They just yeah. That's they, where they like it, baby. Yeah, that, that's that's their. They zone. look like a team that could win the entire bloody thing. And Mike Johnson. It's weird because we'll say it all the time and we'll talk about it. But when Mike Johnson, who joined us around 6.20 today, if you want to scroll back and watch it, when MJ comes on today and says they're winning games on the strength of goaltending, defense, and penalty kill, that was like a, I says, pardon? Also, new segment starting on Monday called, I says, pardon? So that's going to be fun. Have they peaked too soon? Eric, please. That, that's, oh boy. The contrarian. You know what? If they win 15 in a row, we'll have that conversation. Have they peaked too soon? It's going to happen. Ugh. This, I mean. What? <laughs> if, they, if they end up, I don't want to have that conversation. But There's four minutes left and yeah. he's going, oh boy, I he's know. really thinking about this. Like when. You should be more concerned about the European football period pyramid here. That, that, that's where you should be. Which you can only play in one competition for the three Europe's, not all three at the same time. Thanks to the te- yeah. te- texter for making me point you're that out. You're either in Champions League, yeah, Europa League, you can't or be in all three. League. No, you're not doing You're all. in one. Yeah. So the, the, Although bottom, if you the, go bottom, for... the bottom two cups are basically just for losers. Domestic. Uh, yeah. Although domestic. you could go from Champions League to Europa League. <laughs> no, no banners. No banners. <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you fall up. Oh, man. You guys. Stop it. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. No, I was just going to say, if they roll into the playoffs like this hot and they win like 38 of 45 down the stretch... Do you realize the heartbreak in this city if they don't win the Stanley Cup? It'd be at the level of lightning being swept by the Blue Jackets Bruins last year. But it's just like the Bills. They had no business being here anyways. No, a 5% it's, chance. You know, you, you're... You'd be that... If you're rolling in something like that, everyone would believe just it'd be easy for them to win the Cup, and it would be at a Bruins lightning-type level loss. That's what it would feel like. Those, those stung. 100% they did. I mean, I, I'm not I saying that's it happening. It's but... like your picker thing. We're just playing the role of contrarian. Hypothetical. It's a hypothetical. All right, let's get to your sound of the day here in the rap for William Huff. I mean, play it all. I, I, Joe. I, I mean, I don't. Let's, let's see here. Let's go back to Stuart Skinner scoring goal in the Western League. Yeah, yeah. And try and get back in the game. They need the points. Here's Skinner looking for the empty net. Rolling, rolling. He scores! Stop it, damn it. Unbelievable. (laughs) Stuart Skinner has a goal. Oh, my. What a dream I was having. Oh, oh, wow. (laughs) And he's going to do the flyby. I could not mix back in the... Uh, what's that one? What a dream I was having? Like, that's a good clip. What a dream I was having! We can have a lot of fun if with that If you've never one. seen the movie, oh, you got to watch on the weekend. Yeah. We'll come back on Monday yeah. and we'll all have a good laugh. Maddie, have you seen Throw Mama from the Train? Oh, dude, you got to watch Throw Mama from the Train. It was a boy's house staple back in the day. Oh, that it's was, a uh, classic. Yeah. Man, if that is, we could mix uh, Whale and the Wolf with a little Ryan Throw Mama over, over the moon. Yeah, yeah. He would, that would make <laughs> his year. We finally made it as a band. The boys are mixing in... Owen's mama clips. Yeah. Will and the you Wolf. Gotta, you got to watch it, buddy. It's hilarious. Will and the Wolf, Regina tonight at the exchange. Tomorrow night, Saskatoon at Amigos. It's really dark, though. Really dark. Go to both. March 1st in Edmonton. March 1st here. Yeah. Oh, they're playing another show here? Well, it's the one that just announced. March 1st. Uh, well, when Union, did they play last in Edmonton? I mean, they should play all the September. time. September. With, uh, with it was Biff. September? Well, they yeah, played with Biff. Oh, no, Biff in yeah, November. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was yeah. later than that. Yeah, okay. Uh, no, so their next show. Um, was it Royal Blood? Is that the show? Royal Blood? Eric's not listening. But the next one? Oh, you don't remember. Evan, pay attention. I don't drink a lot. Cracks a drink at 8.45 a.m. <laughs> I freaking love this show. That well, one's later. Later than Sobeys would have been. So we're... Yeah, and, and it's less. It, yeah, it's less right. than Sobeys would have been. Uh, all right, let's get to your text of the day. Oh, this is a good one. I think we have the Oilers here. hotter than. Is that yeah, the, yeah, the Oilers? The Oilers. This is for A and W. If you're not yet try, it's a pickle party. It's a pickle party at A and W right now. Spicy dill pickle mama burger is back for a limited time only at A and W. Uh, you know, let me just let me try this here for a second. Yeah. <laughs> 
Text of the day for AW. Let's go. Let's go with this one. Um, if you have a wife, this one might actually hit home with you. Uh, no name on this. This oh. person doesn't have a handle yet. So we'll make sure we get the number on this one. We're going to win a text of the day to AW. The Oilers are hotter than my wife's temper when I tell her to relax. That's that's a that is a tough one. Wow! If she sees uh, his phone today, he's dead. Aaron. That's one of the worst. There's two no, things that I can do that piss my wife off. One is uh, say relax. Why should I relax? You know. But then the other one is uh, uh, Keep I know stuff on I've, the desk. I know I've started calling her sweetheart once in a while. Like when she get, I'll be like, oh whatever, sweetheart. She goes, don't call me sweetheart. So. Like yeah, that. and she also hates the desk. We got into it yesterday when I got home a little bit. I said, you always have Tommy's back and neatness things. We got into it? Yeah. And she was just like, well, I, I like the desk when it looks clean. I said, whatever, sweetheart. And then she, Relax. Goes, then she got fired up and I said, Relax. I'm going to have a nap. <laughs> uh, all right, what are we watching tonight? Well, as mentioned a little earlier, action gets underway this afternoon. Clyde and Aberdeen, fourth round Scottish Cup oh action. We'll be uh, <laughs> maybe going over to Scott's place. We can, uh, Come on, man. <laughs> yeah. oh. uh, okay, you're hilarious. I'll uh, give you that. That one, that one, that one, was, uh, that one was pretty funny. Uh, Nets and Lakers for me tonight. And uh, we're going to watch uh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, right. the original tonight. It'll be good. Order some pizza. Watch Willy Wonka go full feature. of Vander Kane. Put the kids to bed and throw Mama from a train. Throw Mama, yeah, Mama from a train. That would be good. Cap. I watched The Town again a couple nights ago while I was doing some work. <laughs> God, I love that movie. There goes college soccer. Just great. Uh, is Tommy in today or what? He's not in today. Is he on oil stream today? Yeah. From his house? Yeah. That's when practice is. Hangout coming up. Murray McCourt and Jay <laughs> Milne are going to be in. Matthew Iwanek will be with them as well. YouTube Trev texted in. He's coming in a little bit uh, a little bit late today. Yeah, I was talking to him. Uh, he mentioned it to me earlier, I think, this week. He says, like, for some reason, the 9 o'clock, he struggles getting here for yeah, 9. He's here all but the time, morning super show, early he has in the morning. absolutely no issues. But he's, he's, like, like, he's like, it's something about waking up and uh, being yeah, traffic, ready to go for traffic's 9. Traffic's a little so. bit different, too, there, too. Hangouts going to be good with Millie McCorder in. They will be with uh, Matty Iwanek as well. Fun show today. The Edmonton Oilers 12 in a row. I'm telling you, it's going to be 13. And we're break, breaking it down on Monday morning. For Mr. Lean and Lieutenant Eric, I am Dustin Nielsen. Tell, tell your friends about ESD. Stick around for the hangout. Make sure autoplay is on on YouTube. I'll be back with the lock shop today. Huge one as we set up the National Football League playoffs with our official picks for the weekend. And then oil stream with myself and Tommy coming up around noon today right here on Edmonton Sports Talk. Have a great day and take it easy.